Mitch and welcome here to the Duggan Park in Ballinasloe. It's Littlewoods Ireland National Camogie League in an intriguing encounter awaiting Galway against Tipperary, two of the big four, and the prize possibly for the winners today, a place in the league final. Last week we saw Cork scrape through to that decider in Crow Park on scoring difference after a draw with Kilkenny, but for Galway and Tipperary they'll be looking to take their place. It was tight last time they met in the league, they've met in the last two All-Ireland semi-finals, and who will prevail today? I'm Darren Kelly, welcome here to the Camogie Association YouTube channel in association with entry, joined by my co-commentator Elaine Aylward and Elaine, as I just touched on there, a uh, game we've been looking forward to at the start of the year, Galway against Tipperary. Yeah, absolutely. Look, when you looked at this group game, or this group, this was probably the standout game and the fact that it came near the end of the group stages, we knew it always had the potential to be everything but, an all, but a league semi-final in name. So that's what it turns out here today. Obviously, Offaly and Galway still have their last group game to play, but if Tip were to win here today, you'll see them through to, to a league final against Cork. So a huge prize on offer for the winners. A lot of talk about Tipperary this year, and even in Porky Keeve when we were there last week talking about Tipperary because they haven't taken a big scout. But the last time we were here in Ballinasloe two years ago, Tipperary did beat the Din All Ireland Champions Galway to qualify for a league final. It didn't happen due to COVID and all that. But they'll be determined now to repeat that and get their day. Yeah, and fittingly for Tipperary, we're back here today and look at Galway that stand in their way of a league final again. As you said, didn't get to play the 2021, so they'll be mad to get going here today to get a result, to get back to a league final. And look, their form has been really impressive. You know, two good opening wins in the opening games against Down and Offaly and then probably a few questions asked of them in the second half by Dublin last weekend and it was probably a nice little wake-up call maybe for them so that they didn't come in here today absolutely blindfolded maybe by what was going to come. But look, you're coming to Ballinas, so you're coming to the home of the All-Ireland Champions. I don't think you expect anything other than a massive, massive massive battle. And while some players have been getting an opportunity for both teams, you can see the squad starting to strengthen. Tipperary are without Karen Kennedy, are without Orlo Dwyer, but there's some big names back as well and they will have been targeted in this match. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Mary Ryan and, and Cote Van, two of the big ones that came back into the team last week against Dublin and probably from Bill Milani and his management point of view, half an eye on this week, knowing that, you know, maybe looking to get a bit of game time into those girls before coming to Galway here today. And look, the, the, for the, the team that loses here today, I suppose, there's no... no league semi-finals there's no more games it's a little bit of Munster Championship maybe for, for Tipperary until the All-Ireland Series so you know I suppose you want to get the best you can out of the game time that you have left and be in the best position possible going into a championship and well many pundits have uh, speculated that Tipperary need this more than Galway of course even you touched on there Galway don't have a provincial championship they want to keep a run going they have big name bear players back as well and even looking at their bench a few names from Sarsfields yeah look I think the last three or four names on the Galway panel are, are probably the most frightful that are there at the moment anyone that's seen Sarsfields recent exploits in the club championship the McGrath's back on the bench and a couple of other Sarsfields players so obviously it's a game that you know Colin Murray and his management team have been targeting as well from their point of view as he said no provincial championship so you know if they don't get to a league final they haven't really been challenged throughout the league so they're going into the championship probably a little bit cold and look the way it is this year is there's a massive gap between between now and between when the championship starts so I'd imagine they'd only love to have another shot at Cork maybe in a league final and look if they win the league final it'll be all well and good but it's another huge challenge ahead of setting them up for the championship and even as we said there this is just a group game it's not even the last group game Galway do have to play awfully next week if they get the result they're not there as well yet but it's a league semi-final many feel an all but name uh, two of the top four two teams determined to get this result and they're going to treat it as such yeah I think so look I think both teams will, will recognise the opportunity that's here today Tipperary were here as we said two years ago never got to play that league final so they're anxious to get back to one and as we've spoken about you know they need to beat some of the big three they need to beat a Galway a Cork or a Kilkenny to, to be seriously taken as one of the top three or four at this stage they're firmly cemented I think as number four at this stage in most people's um, eyes so to take a big scalp and I think it'll breed a lot of confidence into this tip team you know they've come close they got to that All-Ireland semi-final last year in Croke Park probably show Galway a little bit too much respect in the opening stages did create chances but just weren't clinical enough or maybe didn't have the self-belief to put them away whereas you feel if they could get a win over them in the league and, and get to a national final in Croke Park that maybe they would set them up for a championship field if they were to meet one of the big three there again. Tipperary will be hoping to learn from that. Thank you very much, Elaine. Elaine will join myself in the commentary box later on. Galway against Tipperary. Who's going to put themselves in pole position to make the league final? Of course, if it is the Premier County, they will book their spot. We'll find out shortly. Delighted to be joined by Tipperary Camogie manager Bill Milani. And Bill, first things first, you're in the situation where you wanted to be a chance of a league final spot and a showdown with the All-Ireland Champions. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, that's what uh, the league is about. We wanted to be here against Galway today, get a chance at them, get a chance to get into a final like we did a couple of years ago, you know. Uh, but, you know, we know it's going to be a tough ask here. All Ireland champions um, on their home ground, very difficult. But look, we're here, we're ready, we're going to give it our best and go for it, you know. A lot of water is under the bridge since the last time you were here in Banlastow two years ago. A victory, of course, you were denied your league final as well. But no, no doubt you look back in that as well, the confidence that you can get this job done. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, we have to believe who you, who, whoever you're playing against, you have to be believe that you can beat them, you know. And, um, you know, like it was two years ago, two years ago, it's gone now. A lot of, as you said, a lot of water under the bridge. Today is today. We have to start in 10, 15 minutes and uh, give it our best and go for it and get the result. Two big victories, but of course, Dublin last week asked a few questions of your team and no doubt you took an awful lot out of that game. Yeah, exactly. But you look, that's what you want. You want to be challenged every week and you want to be learning every week as well. Players want the experience of um, of playing teams like Dublin and, uh, and Galway and Cork and Kilkenny as well, you know, but I mean, yeah, Dublin put it up to us last week, I thought we were played well and then the, the, I think the conditions took over for both teams and we were delighted to get off the field, but just to get warm I'd say more than anything else, you know. And it brings me to the final question as well, you'd be delighted conditions are much better today and a good chance of a good game of Camogie between both teams. Yeah, exactly, you know, look, we're both here to play and we want to see where we're at this time of year, you know, obviously there's a big prize at stake too, we'll get to a league final. But you know, look, this will, this will tell Galway and Tip where we are today and if we want it bad enough, we'll win it, you know. Well, Bill, very best luck. Thanks very much. That was the Tipperary Camogie manager Bill Mullaney talking to us just a few minutes ago and we are here. You can see conditions absolutely perfect for Camogie here in the Little Woods Ireland National League. Galway against Tipperary, just looking at the Tipperary team in the lane. As we've mentioned even in the pre-match too, this is a big opportunity for this team. Not just the team, but also some of the players breaking into the side this year. They, they need to take a scalp of one of the perceived big three sometime this year. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Tip Camogie is in a really good place and has been for the last couple of years. There's been some great work done there and they're continuing to do. But I suppose on the field, they've, they've kind of been in that fourth position now in a lot of people's eyes for a long time. So you feel, you look, I think myself, if they'd gotten to play that 2020 league final in Crow Park, I think it could have been massive for them. I think it could have been the real breakthrough, Graham. But look, it didn't take place. They're back here today now with a chance to get back to that position. And the players that are here today know that and they know that this is the opportunity that awaits them. But unfortunately for them, it's the All-Ireland Champions Galway who stand in their way. We're looking forward to the game in a couple of moments. You might hear the stadium announcer in the background. Of course, we are having a four-day bank holiday weekend, and the reason we're having that is a National Day of Commemoration, which was Friday for all those we lost during the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years. So we're having that minute silence now before Aron Levine. Thank you. 
that was a run of vein. And I just want to say, like, for all those affected by uh, losing family members through COVID-19, our close friends over the last two years, our thoughts and prayers are with you and uh, your loved ones as well. It's been a difficult two years, but hopefully, and we do say the word hopefully, the world is starting to come back to some form of normality in a lane. That's exactly what we want to see here today. A breezy Duggan Park battle, so it is, but a game of camogie to really look forward to. A crowd still working their way into the battle of venue, and who, you know, a league final place up for grabs for one of these teams. Yeah, absolutely. Look, and as we said beforehand, I think it's important for both teams. Look, it's well documented, as we said, the tip need to get back to, to a national final. They need to, break, to beat one of these top teams in a, in a serious competition. And I think it's really important for Galway as well. Look, they've had a couple of games, maybe getting a couple of players back. But I think the fact that the Sarsfields players that are back on the bench today just signifies how important, I think, and how seriously Colin Murray and his management team are taking this league semi-final, as we said, in all but name. But how important it is for them maybe to get back to, to Croke Park, get back to a national final and, and to try and, and beat Cork there again like they did in last year's All-Ireland final. You know, days like that don't come around too often. So I suppose, look, when you're a Galway team looking to put back-to-back -back on our All-Irelands together, I think there's much momentum as you can carry and the more challenging games you can get this time of the year to, to tee up for championship, the more important they are. The referee is John Dermody from Westmead. We can tell you the Tipperary are playing to the left in the first half means they have the strong enough breeze that is here in Duggan Park. We were talking ourselves off air beforehand how important that wind could be in the first half. While well, Tipperary definitely going to try and take advantage of it. The ball is thrown in. The game is on. And number eight for Galway is Aoife Dunhu back in the midfield position. But it's Grace O'Brien, the joint captain for Tipperary, has possession. You can see the commitment of both teams in this early stages trying to win the possession of the ball as Tipperary come out the field through Courtney Ryan. Their centre back down towards the Galway full Full, full back line, Shauna Healy with the touch along the ground, right in front of us here in the commentary box. Carrie Dolan wears number 10 for Galway. She had a touch there as well. The lines person said it went off a temporary stick. It's going to be a Galway ball and it's going to be taken by Neve Kilkenny, the six time All Star. Uh, just positioning the ball and Galway will know now to just try and work their scoring opportunities in the first half. So Neve Kilkenny from Pierce's down the right there now, trying to get into the open space, but there's a sea of Blue and gold jerseys and Aoife McGrath. The number seven will be the player that wins this ball, tries to get it out the field and getting in the way of that was Rebecca Headley who scored three goals and three points in Galway's victory over down the last day. Galway coming to this game with two wins from two. Tipperary, three wins from three. Galway, even if they win today, won't have mathematically booked their place in a league final. They still have to play Offaly next week. And Offaly side, they'll still be hoping to avoid the relegation playoffs. Dublin against Down. That's in Crow Park tomorrow, 1.45. Another game will be live streaming on the here on the Camogie Association YouTube channel in association with Entry. But I don't know if you can feel that breeze in the background, but a temporary defence deal with the challenge. Down the left flank as well. Roisin Black tried to get a touch for Galway. She did get a touch. The ball goes out over the line. Casey Hennessy. Tipperary player wear number 12 that uh, put, applied the pressure on that occasion and it'll be Aoife McGrath the drum and inch captain county champions in Tipperary for three consecutive years restarting the action inside the 65 meter line nearly two minutes gone in the game no score so far excellent take from Roisin Howard they love it when Roisin Howard's on the field in Tipperary running into Aoife Dunhu Aoife Dunhu uh, with possession did very very well up against Quiva Marion on lane you can already see the commitment the intensity, the physicality, dare I say, of both teams fighting for possession. Yeah, huge tackle there in on, on Roisin here, but she made great headway forward, getting forward, but obviously just come off now with a little bit of a hand injury, but yeah, seriously, some seriously contested line balls up and down this side, just in front of us, as you said, just shows the, the tenacity, I suppose, of the tackle there, and both teams may be a little bit nervy in the first couple of minutes, just trying to get possession of the ball. Of course, Emma Helbert, as you mentioned, they're receiving attention, and Roisin Howard as well, just coming off the field for the moment, both of them uh, feeling the effects of that collision. We haven't run through the two teams yet, so we'll quickly do that. Let's look at the Tipperary team first. Anya Slattery in goal, full back line of two, Julianne Burke, three, Mary Ryan, and four is Emer Lokman. The half back line were number five, Sarah Delaney, six, Courtney Ryan, and seven, Aoife McGrath. In midfield were number eight is Quiva Maher, partnered by number nine, Grace O'Brien. The half forward line, ten, Quiva McCarthy, eleven, Roisin Howard, and twelve, Casey Hennessy and the inside line top of the right number 13 Claude McIntyre full forward Claire Hogan and top of the left where number 15 caught the fan in the lane before I come to you on that team Tipperary have made a, a temporary change and anyway, Eber McGrath with number 22 has come on the field in replay, in, instead of Roisin Howard Yeah just a blood sub there I think initially indicated so Roisin just getting a little bit of attention here in front of us and hopefully from a tip point of view she'll um, resume her position shortly 
So Tipperary on the move again as Grace O'Brien find a teammate and down towards the corner forwards caught the fan. It wasn't her game in that occasion. Claude McIntyre sends the ball across and Tipperary can they get the first score. This is an opportunity. The pass had found itself. It could have worked out. Claire Hogan didn't find Casey Hennessy the first time, but she finds her the second time. It's taken three and a half minutes. The first score of the game. Tipperary one going nil. Yeah, but what a ball across from Cotavan initially, you know, in a huge battle there in her hands with Sean Healy or, or Sarah Dervin, wherever she plays inside in that full forward line today. But saw the run of Claire Hogan and, and Casey Hennessy outside her. A super ball across and did really, really well to gather. Claire Hogan's been having a, a huge league so far for, for Tipperary. So I suppose a huge challenge for her now today on Sarah Devan. Tipperary one point goal we no score break of play just on the Tipperary 65 near her line John Dermody the official will throw this ball back in Tipperary of course want to build a bit of an advantage with the wind that is here of course the sky is so blue it's a great day to be out here watching Camogie or any sport whatever sport you fancy seeing the number 7 for Galway is Derva Higgins Derva Higgins to Emma Halliburton Galway moving down the left or Becca Henley trying to drive one in towards the Galway attack a cross field ball an opportunity here for Neve Hanavy back in full forward she played midfield last year Neve Hanavy with an overhead pass in the direction of Sabina Rabbit, a player we're really looking forward to seeing in a Galway jersey today. Doesn't happen on that occasion. Tipperary win possession and send it back out towards the middle of the field again. But it's won back again by Derva Higgins. Derva Higgins to Anya Keane, another new player in the Galway team, Rebecca Henley, leaving it again for Anya Keane. And Anya Keane took needed a couple of goals to get the ball in her hand. Looks has been given the time to go for this. Uh, didn't get the power on the shot that she wanted. And Anya Slattery, all star goalkeeper in 2020 wins the ball what a drive and Onya Slattery is well able to hit the ball Farla hello the breeze that is here as well get this inside the opposing 45 meter line a foul a free for Tipperary and an opportunity now for Contefan to get her first score of the game and give Tipperary a second point of the match we have played just over 5 minutes and Contefan who has scored I think it's 10 points in the league campaign so far over 3 games a great spread of scores for Tipperary has to be said this year 13 different scores before today's game caught the fan with the free for Tipperary should be bread and butter it goes over the bar five and a half minutes in it's Tipperary two points to nil up yeah and that's just the benefit of that breeze isn't it you know Anya Slattery with that clearance made it all the way to, to the full forward line there where caught the van was out in front got the little push and you know went down and, and got her easy free but that's the benefit of the breeze I suppose is those clearances it's important for Tipperary to take advantage of that, but go, we are fighting for every ball and no better than Neve Kilkenny. Neve Kilkenny inside the 65 meter line, racing down the right, chased by two players. A third one came in, Courtney Ryan to stop her, but she didn't find the ball in the direction of Rebecca Henley, just didn't materialise at the moment. And as we've said already, you can just feel the commitment, how much it this means to both teams as well some might say it's only the league not if you're from Galway or from Tipperary the battle for possession continues as Galway try and gain a few extra yards Neve Hanavy has the ball in her hand gives the pass off to Anya Keane Anya Keane on the right there but she go for the shot herself is this the first score of the game for Galway it is Anya Keane puts the ball over the bar six and a half minutes gone Galway a point Tipperary two yeah and, and Galway will be happy with that you know it was a, a point from the making of Neve Kilkenny out around the middle of the field how often have we seen that before but you know gain the possession down the right wing and you know the pass is just sticking a little bit easier that time than they had on the previous attack for Galway. Uh, Anya Slattery took the puck out but the referee wasn't ready for it because we can tell you that Roisin Howard is back in the field to play instead of Emer McGrath and just while well, there's a quick hold up there let's quickly run through the Galway team Sarah Healy in goal a full back line of two Shauna Healy three the captain Sarah Durvin her first start of the season and four is Rachel Hannafy the half back line were number five Roisin Black six is Emma Hellebert and seven is Derva Higgins in midfield were number eight Eva Donahue partner with number nine Neil Kenny the half forward line ten Carrie Dolan eleven Rebecca Henley 12 on Yakin and inside line of Sabina Rabbit 13, Neve Hanavy 14, and Ailish O'Reilly wears number 15. So the long drive goes out of play the far side of the field. This will be a Galway line ball and it's going to be taken by Aoife Donoghue. And just while we're watching this, Elaine, as we already mentioned, Sabina Rabbit, a player we're looking forward to, but also Anya Keane in the attack has been involved in a good bit of play in the early stages. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, I think that's probably what, what most managers want to find in their league campaign is to find a couple of new players and young players that they can breed into a team. And look, Galway already have a very successful and a very good front six. So, you know, if they can find a couple more to add to that going into championship, I think Galway will be very happy with that. 
Yeah, the competition for places. We expect to see some other household names over the uh, next hour or so. Tipperary have a free between the 45 and the 65 metre line and it's going to be taken by Cote de Fan and uh, every score Cote de Fan gets today is going to be very, very important for Tipperary. They were denied their league final two years ago. Of course, other factors came into play more important than the game of Camogie but for Tipperary, it would have meant so much for their development. Cote de Fan takes the free. The umpires look at each other. They like what they see. It's gone over the bar. Eight and a half minutes gone. Tipperary tree go we won yeah another super free from Cotevan you know as we've come to expect over the years and although I know she's a strong breeze behind her there sometimes it's swirling a little bit so it can be hard enough to judge but no no trouble to Cotevan and Sarah Healy as well able to put the ball out too so even just goes to show the breeze that she couldn't get it to the 65 meter line Grace O'Brien won the ball back this is Aoife McGrath wearing number 7 and a cross field ball to the other player in the red helmet is Claire Hogan who just gets in front of Sarah Dervin Claire Hogan now trying to get control of the ball needs some support there is support there from Quiva McCarthy Quiva McCarthy goes to the ground as the goalie defence work hard Roisin Black where's number 5 but Tipperary have held on to possession Claire Hogan sending it across there and an important interception on that occasion by Emma Hellebert the Galway centre back but again Tipperary fighting for the ball this is Quiva Maher Quiva Maher goes to the post will that turn in for her it does turn in for her and a wonderful point from Quiva Maher it has to be said not just for the strike floating over the bar but the work rate of the Tipperary players to create the opportunity yeah exactly it was from the first initial ball in in front of Claire Hogan you know, did really well to, to cut her line in front of Sarah Dervin there, got possession first and when she didn't get to take her on, looked to recycle it, great support play then from Quiva McCarthy again and you know, Bill Milani will be really happy with the way Tip made that ball stick inside there really, really important interception from Emma Helbert, maybe stop Tip creating something a little bit bigger but happy to get the point it's important for Tipperary to get the start in this game. We were kind of feeling that they'd need the wind in the opening half. But of course, three points based on the breeze here. But of course, the one thing I can tell you about Banla Slow is that sometimes the breeze can shift uh, the other direction here. So, you know, go. we'll be hoping that doesn't happen over the course of the game and they get that stiff breeze in the second 30 minutes and they'll fancy themselves of getting back into the game. But all Tipperary can do at the moment is lay a platform as they go in another attack. Emma Hellebert getting a touch there again. Doesn't break kindly as Grace O'Brien works hard to win the ball. Turns in a right and side in towards the attack again down in the direction of Clodagh McIntyre who's up against Rachel Hannafy another goalie player breaking into the team gives the pass off in the direction of Quiva McCarthy the referee wasn't happy with what he saw reckons it was a throw so it's going to be a free out for goalie and a chance for him to breed yeah and look you can see what Tipper are trying to do in that full forward line you know they've got plenty of pace in there with Clodagh McIntyre and Claire Hogan and they're switching from side to side and they're looking to play the ball into that corner on the outside of the of the Galway backs and looking to take them on from there but they also have super support run coming through so you know if they don't get around them the first time it's heads up hurling and it's looking for that run that's coming in from, from that half forward line unlucky on that occasion that the hand pass was, was deemed a throw and was called back but as you said a chance maybe for, for Galway to just catch their breath now and just uh, settle down a little bit Well a bit of concern there for Galway as well it's like Shauna Healy is the player down receiving attention at the moment and it's given everybody a chance for an impromptu water break uh, of course they're gone now in competitive Kabuki but there's plenty of water being passed around there and being consumed at the moment but for Galway having a look at Shauna Healy and of course the Galway full back line Rachel Hannafy is getting her opportunity today Heather Cooney is on the bench we've no doubt we'll see her at some stage Shauna Healy's become such an important player for Galway over the last couple of years yeah absolutely massive you know and, and she's the one that tends to, to pick up the danger players wherever they are on the opposition team and it's no surprise to see her right beside Caught Devan here today and probably will follow her for the hour there but she's a real you know not just a great defender but she's great to get out and to set up attacks as well so a real key player for Galway and one of those names that will be first on the team sheet every week. Sarah Healy got a long drive down the left. Rebecca Healy looked like she was creating a chance but was cut out by Courtney Ryan, the centre back, getting a chance in the central position this year. But this is Galway on the move again. Ailish, no, sorry, it was Sabina Rabbit. And Sabina Rabbit, a player we were talking about, gets her first score of the game 12 minutes into the match. Back to two points, two for Galway, four for Tip. Yeah, and a lovely, neat little score. You know, lovely ball in, controlled it really, really well. Looked to go, maybe take on her player. The opportunity she didn't present, but the way she turned back and got out onto her side, good side, and swung it over the bar again. A super point from her that's our second point of the league campaign Sabina Rabbit did come off the bench against Dublin to get a score part of the Presentation College Atten Rye team that won the All-Ireland Senior A Schools Championship this year the first time that college has won it in 44 years and as I say that about schools All-Ireland well, what a week Tipperary have had two titles won uh, during the week Ursula from Turles uh, yesterday uh, we're beating Loretta and Kilkenny to win their Junior A title and the Junior B crown uh, on St. Patrick's Day actually went to Presentation Turles they beat St. Bridget's from Callan 3 7 
to one for so both Tipperary and Galway doing a lot of good work at underage a lot of good work with sponsorship as well Tipperary wearing their new Alpha Motors jerseys here today this is Casey Hennessy she's gotten inside and the space has opened up a chance for Tipperary up to hit it high up to put it over the bar another score for herself another score for Tip five points to two yeah and just for a second there that Galway defence was opened up a little bit and you know Clodagh McIntyre was free across on the far side but as you said Casey Hennessy maybe saw the half opportunity and just opted to get it over the bar but an important score and it just stretches tip lead, Tip's lead again. Of course, as I mentioned, Tipperary's new jersey as well. Going no longer sponsored by Supermax. Westwood Global are their new sponsors as well. Anya Keane taking possession in the green helmet. Down looking for the other player in the green helmet who's been a rabbit. That's cut out on that occasion. And Tipperary will bring it up to their joint captain, Julianne Burke. Julianne Burke just runs into Neve Kilkenny. Very few people come out the better side of that collision. But Galway just struggling at the moment now with their first touch to get control of the ball. The pressure being applied by Tipperary in action happening between the two 65 meter lines. Derva Higgins with a great. 2021 wins the ball, sends it on the ground towards Rebecca Henley from the Ardrahan Club. She turns on her right, but nobody there from Galway. And plenty of time here now for Aoife McGrath to look around and send the ball up the field. But she didn't look too well because Emma Helbert won the race. And Aoife Dunhu getting a touch as well hasn't uh, got into it. And there was a bit of afters there. And uh, just goes to show <laughs> that these two teams are leaving, are leaving nothing behind. Yeah, no, I don't think Aoife Dunhu was too happy to have that one flicked off her hand by, by Casey Hennessy. Maybe reacted a little bit and a, a little bit after is again then from Casey Hennessy but look nothing malicious in either I think just as you said just shows the passion and, and the, the commitment that's out there I have a funny feeling that John Dermody will be having a word with Casey Hennessy. Indeed, he is at the moment. There was the hurl coming out afterwards. So you'd imagine the, the first yellow card off this game uh, will take place. Uh, it's not a dirty game, Elaine, we have to say. But uh, I have a funny feeling this won't be the last yellow card we see over the hour. No, look, it's a... It, and it's actually a oh, red card. It's a red card over so striking the fence and Casey Hennessy has gone off the field and Tipperary won't be happy with that. Now it has to be said the hurl did come out like you know what I mean. So in fairness to the lines person, she looked at it there. The referee made a call and Tipperary down to 14 players. Yeah, look, I think she's probably judging by the, the reaction of the referee. It did look like it was a striking action and look, she probably did pull back a little bit. But I would always question why was she pulling back? You know, if I don't know what had been dispossessed, she followed into Casey's, Casey's face straight away and look, it takes two to tango out there and look, it's a, it's a tough blow for Tipperary but I suppose rules are rules. It's an awful blow there for Tipperary. Now you might see a Tipperary number 30 on the field of play but that is Roisin Howard. She changed her jersey as well after going off uh, for the blood sub earlier on. Grace O'Brien now, how do Tipperary deal with this? Another test of their credentials to challenge the other three teams, Galway, Cork and Kilkenny. The crossfield ball in the direction of Sarah Delaney but it's won by Aoife Dunhu. and Aoife Dunhu on the 45 metre line moving inside there now being chased down by Sarah Delaney and Sarah Delaney has done well to stop Aoife Dunhu. Very briefly it has to be said the ball comes back to Rachel Hanafi who has uh, sent the ball in towards the attack as well but Tipperary win possession they win the free and they're going to have to work very very hard in this game good work by Mary Ryan on that occasion and a free for Tipperary on the 45 metre line and it's going to be taken by Aoife McGrath so Eva McGrath takes the free, looks up now, and every ball Tipperary sent down in towards the attack has to be accurate. Claire Hogan not winning it, and Sarah Durvin win possession. You can see they're coming back as Neve Hanafy to help out the action. It'll be interesting to see what way go we set up now with the extra player on the field to play. Eva McGrath with the ball, gives it to Grace O'Brien. Grace O'Brien down the left as well, and this might work out kindly for Roisin Howard. Roisin Howard, the first touch, let her down. Can she keep it in place? She has kept it in play. Trying to shake off the attention of Derva Higgins. The ball goes across, the ball goes over the bar, and Roisin Howard gets the point. She did well to control the ball. Good score, Tipperary. Yeah, found herself in probably more space than she would have anticipated down there initially, and was just working her way out from the previous play, but as you said, did really well to keep it inside the end line there, and that's a super response from Tipperary, you know, Mary Ryan broke up that last Galway attack, drove out with it, won the free, and that's ultimately what set up that last attack. Tipperary six points, Galway two as Galway going attacked in the ball down the direction of Sabina Rabbit. Sabina Rabbit looking around on the 45 beer line, tries to send the pass inside, but again the Galway attackers just coming out. Neve Kilkenny pushed inside there, but none of the 13, 14, or 15 in possession. Galway moving their players around. Looks like Neve Hanafy is out in the middle of the park at the moment. Shauna Healy trying to win the ball there for Galway, but uh, gets stopped in her tracks by Costavan. And now the extra players come in, and the referee was always going to be a throw in ball 
in this position as we are now in the second quarter of this Littlewoods Ireland National Camogie League game here on the Camogie Association YouTube channel brought to you in association with entry Tipperary with the advantage leading by four points six points to two of you are just joining us but down to 14 players a red card for Casey Hennessy and Galway now can they take advantage of this in the second half as Carrie Dolan gives the ball to Derva Higgins and this is Aoife Dunahoo Aoife Dunahoo is Neve Kilkenny out to the right and Neve Kilkenny gets the space that she likes here she's going to go for the shot it should be a point for Galway it doesn't and again the breeze probably a factor in that one but Anya Sattery hasn't dealt with that needs a bit of support had Quiva Maher outsider but decides to go down the centre and Tipperary have averted the danger in that occasion what can they do at the other end with the ball bounce for Claire Hogan Claire Hogan against Sarah Durvin turning into a bit of an interesting battle Sarah Durvin the two-time All-Ireland winning captain and six-time All-Star wins it on that occasion and Carrie Dolan with the ball looking for Neve Hanavy decides to to give Derva Higgins instead. She shakes off two Tipperary players but doesn't beat the third. The third player is Emer Luckman wearing the number four jersey. She gives it back to Courtney Ryan and Courtney Ryan, one number six, sends it into space where the other number six will retrieve the ball out over the line and a line ball a lane. Just as we're looking around there for the spare Goey player but also Goey seem to be moving their, their deck around as well. Players are playing in different positions and they've certainly changed their tactics since uh, Casey Hennessy went off. Yeah and Emma Helbert does look to be that spare player down there and she's sweeping over and back there. You know she'll need to sit fairly deep because any tip clearance that's coming it's coming along with that breeze behind them so she's going to ultimately spend most of her time I would imagine between the 21 and 45 there with the length of the clearances that are coming from the tip backs and midfielders but so it's Galway's first touch probably just a little bit off at the minute I'm not sure if it's if it's hurling work or, or more physical work they've been doing the last couple of weeks but their first touch and maybe just that last little pass up front um, just failing them on occasion but as we saw from Neve Kilkenny's last shot there a massive breeze there so you know shooting from, from out the field is just not an option for Galway in this first half they'll need to, to work the ball in and try and create something in closer to that Tipperary goal. It's a Goy player receiving attention on the far side of the field. I think it is Anya Keane uh, which, got, which looks like she's okay to continue. Just a lane before the game restarts we, we've been talking about this breeze an awful lot we can feel it up here in our commentary box. How many points do you feel Tipperary need to have especially now being a player down if they have a realistic chance of winning this match? Yeah look I think for the second half you're going to be looking at trying to work the ball from a Tipperary point of view work it up striking you know long clearances are not going to work against that breeze so you're going to have to work it up through the lines and obviously when you're a player down you know that takes massive work rate anyway but to be trying to work the ball against that breeze is going to be huge but look they dug it out here two years ago against it so look it's, it's easily I'd say six seven point breeze maybe with the clearances and and the the puck outs alone you know you're going to be pinned back into your own half of the field for your for your puck outs you're going to have to be working them out so especially up against a Galway team that was well able to get goals you know I feel Tipper probably going to have to be six or seven points up at half time. They have a four point lead at the moment they have a free here and try and create another scoring opportunity as the ball doesn't hold kindly for Quiva McCarthy and Sarah Durvin wins it doesn't get it too far but the referee uh, says it was a foul there so it's going to be a free in for Tipperary Lane yeah, I think he's blown her, Sarah Durvin there for, for dropping the hurl. I'm not sure if it was dropped or, or helped out for a hand, but uh, either way, it is a Tipperary free and, and caught the van looking to go quick for this. Yeah, caught the van. She was definitely standing up there too and uh, uh, Shona Healy wasn't letting her go uh, too quickly anyway and caught the van. I will probably take her time and decide to put this over the bar. We've gone past the 20 minute mark in the first half here in Ballinasloe. Oh. Tipperary in front by 4.6 points to 2. Caught the van. Uh, she's, th she's thinking about it, but she'll probably pop this over the bar. She does pop it over the bar another score for Tipperary they're gone five in front seven points to two yeah she definitely thought about it and definitely along the line here I, I could hear the Galway management thinking about it trying to get numbers back on the line but a, a, a free and just maybe a score to settle Tipperary now at this point Tipperary have conceded two goals in the championship so far. Galway have not conceded any, or the league I should say, my apologies. This is Ayla Shirwali who's well capable of getting goals or setting up goals into Aoife Donahue who goes to the ground again, takes the challenge from the Tipperary player and it's going to be a free in on the 45 metre line and Carrie Dolan, you could say her first opportunity in the match to uh, go for a shot at the post from a place ball. Uh, it'll be into, definitely we know Elaine from Carrie Dolan's effort here, exactly how strong this breeze is. Yeah, that'll be a good gauge but you know it's right on the 45 there now so we'll, we'll have a good gauge of where the free takers but Tip need to be alert now to, to Galway players out the field maybe making a run for a short free because there's no guarantee that this one will make the end line Galway have three changes and decide to beat down in their last game 4-17 to 8 points of course Sarah Durvin back in the team we congratulate herself and her husband Alan Leach on their wedding that took place a few weeks ago Sabina Rabbit who we've mentioned already and Neve Hannafy in the attack too painful forward uh, Kira Dunahoo Kira Murphy and Catherine Fernandy the three players that have made way we're watching Carrie Dolan here 
getting ready to take this free for Galway, an important one you would feel for them, and she definitely gets distance with the ball holds, you can see it turning, but it looks good, it's gone over the bar, it's back to a four point ball game after 23 minutes, three points to seven. Yeah, that was a real uh, a hometown free, I think uh, Carrie read the wind really, really well there and guided it right over the bar, and as you could see, it could ended up maybe 10 or 15 yards to the left of the pole by the time it had gone over, but the important part was it got over the crossbar and got over that black spot and a score for Galway. Galway will be happy enough to keep this margin around where it is up until half time, which will come in about seven minutes' time. Long drive again from Anya Slarry. Does Tipperary want to put the pressure on this ball? Might break kindly for one of their two attackers. Clodagh McIntyre is the player that won the ball. She turns on the right, goes for a shot in the post, and that ball, it was always an acute angle. It goes out to the right and wide, and Sarah Healy looks like she wants to get home with it straight away. She was anxious to hit it first time, has changed her hurl since nobody given her an option. Sarah Healy does send it out towards the middle of the field again, and excellently taken there by Galway and taken by Anya Keane, who gives it to Shauna Healy. Shauna Healy down the left in the direction of Neve Kilkenny, never uh, really too far away from a temporary player, will keep tight on her, but Neve Kilkenny, plenty of experience, has been representing Galway since 2006. A couple of passes later, and between the 65 meter lines, Neve Hanavy goes in a run. Grace O'Brien again, not for the first time, getting an important touch for Tipperary, and all of a sudden uh, it's turned into a Tipperary attack. Claire Hogan, though, on her own against four Galway defenders. It's hard enough to beat one, let alone beat four. And Neve Donahue, um, our experience there, well able to read the ball, moves up the field, turns away from Quiva Maher, and sends it into space to our midfield partner in crime, and that's Neve Kilkenny. Neve Kilkenny has time, will go for the shot or send the ball inside. Might come for Anya Kane, she got the hurl up to get a touch, but Tipperary just get it out towards the corner. They haven't cleared it yet, and good work along the ground there by the Tipperary defence, and Quiva Maher in possession, but it's Ema Lokman that deserves the credit for keeping her composure there. Eventually the foul is committed on the ground, Elaine, it's going to be another free in for Galway. Yeah, and a let off for tip there initially, you know, a super ball across from Neve Kilkenny, had just a little bit too much height on it for the inside forward line, but broke nicely for a tip, but just failed to clear their lines, and, and Quiva Mar then eventually penalised for touching the ball on the ground. So Carrie Dolan now have another opportunity to send the uh, ball towards the Squill and Green Afa, which is behind the goal there. Uh, St. Gwilin's Boys National School back in the day. Carrie Dolan getting ready to take this about 50 yards out from the goal. She'll be confident enough after her first effort. So again, the respect for the free taker goes quite from both sides. Carrie Dolan, she's going for power today. Again, you're taking that gamble. It's turned. It would definitely be a Hawkeye shot if we were in Crow Park, but it did definitely turn and turned away to the left. Yeah, and look, Carrie, you've read the first one so well and, and probably didn't do anything too different there, but just the way the breeze is blown, um, just carried it just before the post on that occasion. The umpire was sure that it had gone out to the, to the left and wide before the post. So Anya Slattery getting ready to restart the action. As we look around the field there to see what options are for Tipperary, drive down the middle, route one Kamogi is the plan of attack, but it just lands to the Galway player, and Galway will move on the uh, attacking in the inside line, and the Tipperary player goes to the ground, referee says that Ailish Riley is the guilty party, and it's going to be a free out for the Premier County, and a chance again to slow things down, and a bit of concern here at the moment, I'm just having a quick look to identify the player, it looks like it's Mary Ryan that's on the ground as well, and a player that certainly, Elaine, that Tipperary would not want to be going without. No, certainly not, especially given her experience back there. You know, when, when they are down to 14, she, she'll be key in that defence and marshalling that defence, especially in the second half as they deal with, you know, long ball in from Galway with that breeze behind them. But um, a massive player for Tipperary, you know, and they'll be anxious to see her back on her feet. But look, she time and time again comes out with those important balls, makes those important interceptions back there. So I'm sure Bill Milani and Tip will be delighted to see her back on her feet. Mary Ryan came into the Tipperary panel after their last All Ireland victory in 2004. She's been on a journey to get that elusive medal. Will it happen last year? Like the fairy tale story of Trace Maher from Galway, who, of course, is part of their backroom team. And another long drive from Tipperary. They're trying to pinpoint Claire Hogan or possibly Quiva McCarthy. They were 14 and 10 if you're watching this, but it's Galway bringing the ball out through Shauna Healy. Shauna Healy in direction of Carrie Dolan. Uh, just forced out over the line. It's going to be a Tipperary ball again. Grace O'Brien, the player, Elaine, that's involved in a lot of these breaking up going momentum. Yeah, you know, she's a player who, who previously, I suppose, up to maybe the year before last would have been involved in, the, in as a corner forward for Tipperary, but has moved out to the middle of the field and I think has really reveled in that position, covers the ground so well, often pops up up front for a couple of scores and you'll see her back in her own full back line on occasion. So a really huge player for Tipperary and small in size, but massive in, uh, in heart out there.
Caught Devan getting too much purchase in that, but even at midfield, uh, Grace O'Brien, I think, has scored seven points in the league camp in the three previous games coming into this match. Uh, no wasting time from Galway. Go even though against the win, want to move the ball quickly, want to take advantage of the extra player. Tipperary win the ball back. Julian Burke gives it to Caught Devan. Caught Devan wants to get one from play, goes to the post. It goes out to the right and wide. That opportunity goes uh, goes a beggar. But just interesting there uh, that uh, Galway seem to want to move this very, very quickly. Yeah, I think Sarah Healy's trying to pick out the of players nice and early before tip get a chance maybe to reset and get the bodies back on them you know distance is not going to be huge against that breeze so i suppose accuracy is what they're really going for and, and trying to find a player 27 and a half minutes gone in the first half it's Tipperary 7 points it's Galway 3 and Galway looking to create the goal scoring opportunity they have scored 5 goals in the league campaign so far but they have plenty of lethal weapons they can get goals one of them is Neve Kilkenny takes the pass on Monia Keane can we, will she get, take on the Tipperary defence she's trying to get the space and Tipperary taking no chances back to Neve Hannafy drops the ball the first time of asking has a second go at the post and Neve Hannafy goes for the point and the umpire likes it he goes for the white flag and Neve Hannafy gets the score yeah, 28 minutes gone it's a three point ball game four points to seven yeah and Neve has been further out the field maybe on a couple of occasions there just trying to back in her own defence but got up front there on that occasion and you know again Neve Kilkenny had slipped inside and it was a super ball across there to her but you know Galway looked like they couldn't possibly create something up front but happy for the minute just to, to keep tipping away at the scoreboard and keeping the points chipping on Tipperary could do it another point or two before half time you would feel on your slattery with a long drive again deep down towards the uh, full back line even behind the full back line but Emma Hellebert from Ballandering reads it very very well and sends it out towards the middle of the field where Carrie Dolan tries to get in the ball but again Tipperary staying very very tight good work by Roisin Howard but Galway hold on to possession through Rebecca Henley turns on her right hand side sends it down in towards the corner but the ball won't travel the way Galway wants and Eber Lokman happy enough to win possession down the left again a bit of tennis here in Banlaso and it misses all three players as Claude McIntyre chases back after Rebecca Henley trying to get possession caught the fan is there as well the ball definitely did go out over the line the argument is over who's it for the lines person says it's a temporary ball uh, the referee will he overrule that decision or not it looks like the caught the fan is going to get her sideline cut and you would just wonder and we are perfectly placed where we're watching this game at the moment you'd wonder would she have a pop at the post not to be in this occasion since one in the direction and Quiva McCarthy. Uh, Quiva McCarthy doesn't get it, but Claire Hogan is there as well. But Shauna Healy, the player that wins the ball and moves it out the field again, out of touch, as you'd say. And it's going to be another temporary opportunity. Eva McGrath might take it in this occasion, the slitter dropping into a, a bucket full of water bottles. But she has it now just outside and is trying to tee this up as well. So maybe Eva McGrath might consider having a go at this. We're really teeing them up here. But she decides to send the ball into space. But Galway reading it very, very well and Anya Keane the player that reads it very very well wins the ball gives it to Aoife Dunhoe Aoife Dunhoe going past the 45 meter line we have played the 30 minutes of the first half we haven't been given any indication how much at a time will be played in the first half but it's Galway in possession of the ball trying to move it in but again Tipperary getting a stick in there just to break up a Galway attack this is caught the fan caught the fan going for the post caught the fan puts the ball over the bar Julian Burke the player the one possession and caught the fan delivers four between the beginning yeah, and that's a huge score, a real, a real crowd lifter for, for Tipperary, I suppose, to dispossess Neve Kilkenny on a run like that. But Julian Burke, super little flick, kept the ball in play, on to caught the van and, you know, gauged the distance perfectly. Tipperary lead Galway by eight points to four. We have played one minute of injury time so far. Foul on, is it too, on your keen on the ground again? And the referee is going to have a word with another Tipperary player here. And of course, uh, we thought earlier on there might be a yellow card. So Tipperary just needs to be careful with these challenges because John Dermody has proven he will make the big decisions if he needs to. So uh, no doubt a card is definitely coming here for Tipperary. So I think it's Sarah Delaney, the player that gets the yellow card. So Galway will have a free. It's going to be taken by Emma Hellebert on the 65 metre line. Looking to bring Galway back to three points before half time. But of course, the tension for Anya Keane. Second time she's been down in this game. You can see the white flags there, the far side of the field, beating away on a Saturday here in the middle of a four day bank holiday weekend. Emma Hellebert just waiting for the opportunity to take this free but it won't happen for a couple of moments 
Yeah, and you'd imagine she's going to be looking for a run inside from some of her inside forwards. You know, this one is not going to travel the distance, but uh, Galway will be looking to get onto the brakes inside her, maybe make a run from, from deep within. I see Aoife who free around the middle of the field, so if you could see her making a run through, maybe tip with the numbers back just to try and defend it and defend that four-point lead just before half-time. So we're getting ready to restart the action. It just gives us a moment to give a shout out to the minor players from both counties. Tipperary play Cork tomorrow and Galway play Kilkenny. The two winners of that game will be through to the All-Ireland Minor A Camogie final next week. Another game we'll have live here in the Camogie Association YouTube channel and association with entry. Tipperary again just overhitting some of those balls. They need players to stay inside you at field. Sarah Healy happy enough to bring this out to the field in the ever-industrious Aoife Donoghue with the ball. Goes in the run again towards the 65 meter line. Knows exactly what to do with it. Gives it to Neve Kilkenny. Neve Kenny has a look up because spotted Ailish and Riley on the move but Tipperary again getting the touch doing the job and send it out the field again towards uh, that Clodagh McIntyre with possession of the ball uh, she has possession turns it on the right here and Tipperary trying to find another score before half time they're spraying the ball around this is Sarah Delaney Sarah Delaney down in towards the attack as Quiva McCarthy tries to control it but Sarah Durvin comes out to meet the ball meet the challenge and uh, sends it across the field it worked its way to Eva Dunhu uh, a bit of help there from Emma Helbert has to be said. Diagonal ball down for Ailish Riley again. Hasn't been given much space from the Tipperary full back line in the first half. Galway looking for another score before the break. And Roisin Howard uh, takes possession, shakes off Eva Dunhu, gives the pass off for Eva McGrath. Eva McGrath goes to the ground. The referee says a foul committed by Durva Higgins. And it'll be a free out for Tipperary. Yeah, and again, another really, really important interception by Mary Ryan in on Ailey O'Reilly in that full back line, you know, came out really strong, broke the ball and, and Tip were first to react to the to the breaks in there and have been awarded a free now. Caught Tavan around back on her own 65, you'd imagine she'll probably fancy her chances from here. Be a big score for Tipperary before half time if Caught Tavan can put, put this over the bar. As Elaine said, about 90 yards from the opposing goal. She has the wind at her back. Is it accurate? It's certainly going to travel. It's going to be very, very close. We're looking for the stair, and the stair falls over the crossbar. A point for Tipperary, and it's nine points to four. Yeah, inside her own 65, and still had something to spare on that one and hit the net behind the goal there. So, huge, huge score for them, and, and probably just reward for the work that they've been doing in defence there for the last couple of minutes. Tipperary have managed to maintain their advantage despite being a player down is there another score in them before half time or will it be one for Neve Hanavy Neve Hanavy scored 14 goals in her Galway career hasn't in two years and she's on the run down the left hand side of the field looking for her club mate from Ormore Mary Ailish O'Reilly Ailish O'Reilly gets inside goes for a shot in the post and it drops short and you would feel that time it should have been much better Anya Stallery sends it out the field with this come for Roisin Howard won't on this occasion and Roisin Black uh, that wins the ball it was goal he's going to go to a Roisin she gives the pass over Derva Higgins Derva Higgins is a player in her left and uh, stopped on the 45 meter line stopped by her opposite number seven Aoife McGrath and uh, players come in to get involved in the battle the referee is having a good look at this he might throw this ball in we've played five minutes in the first half now there has been a few stops with injuries uh, over the course of those five minutes as well it doesn't look like there's any sign that we're going to finish up there will be an opportunity for one of these players as Rebecca Henley and Aoife McGrath are going to go in for this ball just outside the Tipperary 45 meter line management's having conversations with each other uh, and towards the officials and the players as well but the ball is thrown in the scramble right in front of the Galway management team and the referee did look at the watch and he it blows for half time a half that has seen plenty of drama Tipperary holding the advantage most of the way through but down to 14 players after losing Casey Hennessy they lead by 5 points Elaine your overall assessment of the first half yeah look I think they're going to need those 5 points and probably maybe a little bit more inside them but they've worked the ball really really well to be fair they lost their way for a little while in the middle there I think when Emma Helbert dropped back they probably took a couple of minutes just to reassess where, where the deliveries were going and you know just to avoid the spare player in there but coming up to the last few minutes there they seem to have dealt with that look it'll be a different game in the second half now they're going to have to work the ball through the lines those long deliveries are not going to come against that breeze and then on the opposite side you know you're going to see the likes of Neve Hanafy and Ailish O'Reilly Sabine Rabbit in closer to the Tipperary goal and they're the ones that are going to be looking for the quick ball in there so look overall from a tip point of view they're five points up they're a player down it's going to be a massive ask it's going to be a massive work rate but look they're where they want to be at half time that's exactly it it sets up nicely for 30 minutes go we will have the win but Tipperary have the advantage we're going to take a break here in Ballinasau so for about 5 minutes or 5-10 minutes or so uh, before we give you full live coverage of the second half of this Little Woods Ireland's National Camogie League with the half time score as you can see in the scoreboard here in Duggan Park it's Tipperary to the front Tipperary 9 points go we 4 
invincible.
Welcome back here to the Duggan Park in Ballinasloe, the Littlewoods Ireland National Camogie League. We're getting ready for the second half of an important game for both Galway and Tipperary. Tipperary nine points, Galway four. And don't forget, if Tipperary win this game, they will qualify for the league final against Cork in Crow Park on the second weekend in April. The breeze is still blowing to our left. The railway goal they call it in Ballinasloe, and it favours Galway in the second half. And a substitution there uh, for Tipperary. Kira Maher, number 21, coming onto the field to play instead of number five, Sarah Delaney. Tipperary 14 players against 15 the ball is thrown in for the second half is that 5 point advantage enough uh, to beat the All-Ireland Champions or can Galway show why they are the top team in the country at the moment and come back and get the job done we'll get Elaine Aylward's thoughts on what um, she's expecting in the second half in a moment but first it's the Galway defence under a bit of pressure Emma Halbert coming out to meet the ball but again Quiva McCarthy and Claire Hogan that double acting attack uh, making it awkward for the Galway defence just trying to find the third player every time but Aoife Dunne, who of course is always covers every blade of grass in the field of play. She wears number 8 for Galway uh, with the green tape on the hurl. And she's always waiting for the next ball and there's players on the ground at the moment. Uh, kind of like a on a day of super rugby, Elaine. It's, a, it's kind of like a scrum start in the second half. Yeah, it's all bodies in on the line there and it's hard to see uh, who's going to come out with it. But it is Galway on that occasion and Rebecca Henley sets them on the attack. Neve Hanavy with the ball tries to give it across the way. Alicia Wiley is this a start that Galway want on the 30 meter line. Turns goes for a shot. Onya Sari with a touch taps it over the bar. You can say that's officially the first goal chance of the match, and it goes exactly how dangerous Galway could be. Alicia Wiley, nine points to five. Yeah, and how quickly they turned again and again with the benefit of the breeze, and they're back for the second half now. It'll be quick ball into that full forward line, and credit to Onya Slattery in the tip goal there. She was alert to that one and, and got to tip it over the goal over the, the crossbar, but certainly the first clear goal chance we've had. Tipperary's defence will have to be very careful in the second half as Galway will come in spades but Tipperary have shown they're well able to give the challenge as well but Aoife Dunne who has the ball again straight away room one Camogie down towards the attack looking for Neve Hanafy on that occasion as Elaine said at half time expect Neve Hanafy and Ailish Riley to push inside and that's exactly what they've done but Kira Maher wins the ball for Tipperary sends it into the space hoping the Queen of McCarthy will get on that but Emma Hellebert had read the ball very very well it was left up by Roshi Black and all of a sudden Tipperary are looking to push away inside as Quiva Mar uh, brings the ball up towards the D but the Goey defence has shown their patience uh, ball comes out for Rachel Hanavy and uh, Rachel Hanavy just struggling to control the ball at the moment but she gets it up towards the 65 meter line challenge comes in from Clodagh McIntyre Kira Maher is there as well for Tipperary and the body's now in the way stopping Goey just uh, outside the 65 meter line Ailish O'Reilly the four time All-Star in the middle there Mary Ryan had a touch but it's Kira Maher that brings the ball out she wins the free in the process a lot going on there Elaine but Tipperary get the nod yeah and that's what's going to be remembered at the end of all that tackling is that Tipperary got out with the ball and you know Kira de Mar has started really really well since she came in there at half back but I suppose from a tip point of view there's two ways of looking at this every ruck every dead ball there the longer they can keep it the less chance they have of conceding at the back but at the same time it's energy sapping and when you're down to 14 players you know it's, it takes a huge huge work rate so you'd imagine Tipper going to have to run the bench now and Kira de Mar certainly showed that they have potential there too Eva McGrath takes the free for Tipperary in towards the attack and there's an opportunity Roisin Howard with the ball looking for a teammate gives the ball back out for Quiva McCarthy she clinched the fist when she hit that she knew it was going over the bar three minutes into the second half it's ten points to five yeah lovely score there you know a lovely piece of skill from Roisin Howard initially t caught the ball on the hop and, and played it up pulled it back just in time and popped it back out to Quiva McCarthy and that's something Tip have been really really good at in this league is, is recycling ball and finding players in better positions Tipperary looking hungry again as Quiva Maher gives the ball to Grace O'Brien. Grace O'Brien charging in the back there from Aoife Donoghue. Uh, Onya Keane there trying to uh, profit from the uh, spilling slitter, but it hasn't spilled too far on the 45 meter line. Emma Hellebert, the player, gives the pass to Rebecca Hilly. She was fouled after the ball was hit. Uh, Clodagh McIntyre arguing the decision. The referee might have a word with Clodagh, uh, but it'll be a free out for Galway on the 45 meter line. And it uh, looks like another Tipperary player is going to the book lane. Yeah, I didn't quite see, but uh, ref indicating there that it seemed to be a, a hard maybe to the elbow and it looks like another, as you said, a yellow card now for, for Clodagh McIntyre, but uh, certainly couldn't fault Tip for, for not bringing a bit of physicality here today. They've, uh, they're the ones, but I think it's four yellow cards at this stage now. So, you know, huge work rate from them, but Galway are a strong physical team and, and, and Tip obviously trying to match them on those stakes. 
Grace O'Brien was receiving some attention there, but she's back in her feed. What a first half she has had for Tipperary. Emma Hellebert hasn't done too bad either for Galway. A long drive, and you can see the wind there getting it down towards the attack. That's the Galway pan again. Carrie Dolan with the ball gives it to Ayla Shirali. Tipperary are calling for a throw. Play continues on. The referee has, says that Ayla Shirali charged into the Tipperary defender. A Tipperary defender was Julianne Burke. We're going to have another hold up and play. And the referee is he having a word with Ayla Shirali? I do way it's a free out. Yeah, it looks like Ayla Shirali might be joining some of those tip players in the referee's book here now but uh, just a, a frontal charge on Julianne Burke and I think I spoke about the physicality of Galway and their players and I think Julianne Burke is feeling the, the full effects of that here at the minute. Well, as you're right, he does pick up a yellow card. Julianne Burke, a great temporary exponent of the game, joint captain with Grace O'Brien for the 2022 campaign. And just small, they want to make sure that she is okay. No activity on the benches so far. A few players warming up, but no signs of any changes happening yet, though. Julianne Burke is certainly in some distress there uh, with her right arm, but is getting herself back in position, fixing up the helmet. And Tipperary will have the free out and get ready to restart the action. Anya Starry looks like she's going to be taking this free for Tipperary inside the 45 meter line. They'll be happy enough, Tipperary, to take their time with this. Five and a half minutes gone in the second half. Tipperary, 10 points. Galway, five. Anya Slattery, a bit of a problem with the tape on the hurl, I think. So she's going to leave it to Mal Ryan. Uh, Mary officially to take the free out for Tipperary inside the 45 meter line. And Mary Ryan sends it down the right flank but excellently won there by Rebecca Henley for Galway under pressure by Claire Hogan where the number 14 jersey for Tipperary but Rebecca Henley finds Sarah Durvin who comes out the field and Sarah Durvin moves the ball down but it's going to fall for Aoife McGrath Aoife McGrath has support to her left if she can get the pass up but Ailish O'Reilly didn't make it easy and neither did Carrie Dolan and Galway uh, Sabina Rabbit loses out to Julianne Burke but the battle on the 45 meter line for Tipperary is Galway get the bodies in and this is Neve Hanavy Neve Hanavy out to Neve Neve Kilkenny, the two knees working together. Neve Kilkenny with a shot, puts the ball over the bar. Six and a half minutes into the second half, it's six points to ten. Yeah, and from a tip point of view, they're probably just a little bit easy for Neve Kilkenny to come off the back of that rock and, and to take that pop pass and an easy score for them to give away, having worked so hard for it. But, you know, that's what Galway are capable of doing when they get the ball up into that, that side of the field. And, you know, from a Galway point of view, anything now from their 65 on is a scoring opportunity with that breeze behind them. If you were with us last week, you would have seen a draw for Cork against Kilkenny. It was enough to get them into the league final, 1-8 to 1-8. We won't be any the wiser if this game finishes in a draw, who will advance to the league final, because Galway do have to play awfully next week, and we'll, ha we'll know their targets to hit on scoring difference. Uh, Roisin Howard just receiving a drink there. We're going to get restart the action through Anya Slattery, and Anya Slattery getting it up to the 65 meter line. It's going to be a challenge in the second half as Claude McIntyre comes out to meet the ball, illegally so, and it's going to be a free for Galway on Carrie Dolan. Clodagh will need to be very, very careful. She does have a yellow card in the game. Carrie Dolan will, well, she's not going to take the free. Looks like Rebecca Henley is going to come out to take the free. Well able to put the ball over from distance and she'll fancy a go with this lane. Yeah, and look, I think Roisin Black maybe picked up a, a yellow card and just before that last pocket there as well, John Darmody talking to her. So a yellow card for, for Roisin Black on into the book as well. But as you said, yeah, um, Claude McIntyre just having to be a little bit careful now. A lot of players are starting to pick up yellow cards and, you know, something silly may, may be resulting in a second yellow. So a little bit of caution from both sets of, of players. Rebecca Henley doesn't get the ball down towards the goal. She's Goey's top scorer in the league so far, but it's Anya Keane, and Anya Keane puts the ball over the bar. Goey get a score out of it. Eight minutes into the second half, it's seven points to ten. Yeah, great score for Anya Keane there, and as you said, she's had a really exciting start to the league, you know, and played really well in the first half there. She had some super catches from her, and, and a great set of hands, and a point in each half now to go with it, so not a bad start for her. Second point of the league campaign for Anya Keane and she's deserved it based on her performance in this match and the ball bounces nicely for herself inside the Galway 65 metre line. She looks up again, two Galway players come into each other, Sabina Rabbit and Neve Hanafy and Neve Hanafy might have picked up a bit of a knock, it certainly felt the uh, challenge it is in that Roy against Oren Moore Mary and Club Camogie, the two of them just committed to get the ball, Neve Hanafy is pulling herself up so hopefully she'll be okay. Yeah, just all eyes on the ball there I suppose and again Mary Ryan in off the back of the rug to pick up that, that break 
striking ball, but uh, just two Galway players, as I said, all eyes on the ball and, and just a little bit of a collision mid-air. So he found if he just picking up a little bit of attention, but Sabine Rabbit back on her feet. You just see the replay there over there as well as we get ready. Uh, Neve Hanavy sitting up, uh, getting herself uh, in position as we start the action. She certainly wants to make an impact back in the full forward position. She played midfield for Galway during most of 2021. Played her part in the All-Ireland success, but certainly most comfortable in front of the square. Tipperary will have an in, officially an indirect free because they're just restarting the action. A substitution is taking place for Tipperary though and it's uh, happening off screen there at the moment. We'll pick up the player in a moment. The player is Kareen Blair who started the last day so she is in the next change for Bill Milani and his management team and she replaces Quiva McCarthy who's worked very very hard for Tipperary over the course of the game. Play has restarted. Aoife Dunahu in possession of the ball inside the 65 meter line is going to run down the space in the right and Aoife Dunahu of course Tipperary again just getting the touches in there trying to stop Eva Dunahu two hands they call her getting on the move and it's Rebecca Henley in possession turns on her right hand side and Tipperary again have to read that very very well and will bring it out past the 45 meter line and good work on that occasion was it by Eva Lokman and to bring it in towards the middle of the field but Tipperary have to bring it much further than that Kira Maher we're number 21 gives the pass off the pass off to Quiva the Maher's on the move Quiva Maher inside the 45 meter line sold the dummy goes a bit further gives the pass out to the right trying to find one of the two players in the red helmets and uh, Claire Hogan sending it across but Tipperary making a bit of hard work at this and Anya Keane doing well again for Galway down towards the 45 meter line and again those long balls as well needing the teammates to respond quicker and both teams struggling to put two or three passes together not due to any lack of ability of the link up play it's due to the commitment of the opposing team Elaine to get in the way. Yeah absolutely looking there's been some great defending there again you know Emer Lockman on that occasion got out, got the hurling and just got the, the all important flick to, to knock it out of the path of the forward and you know we saw Sarah Dervin at the far side a second ago doing the same thing and time and time again we've seen Mary Ryan doing it so you know it's not due to as you said to the to the lack of, of input from the forwards but sometimes it's just really really well defended and well read by some of the defenders there. We've played 11 minutes in the second half. There is a goalie player on the ground, the far side of the field at the moment. So we're going to have a hold up and play before Tipperary restart the action. It's going to add to the injury time at the end, adding to the suspense of this game because while Tipperary have the advantage and they have led throughout the game, especially since they got their opening point on the fourth minute, the player that is receiving attention is Derva Higgins, but she thankfully for herself, a bit of strap in there, she's okay and getting ready to restart the action. And we will look at Anya Slattery, the Tipperary goalkeeper who has come out into the field to play and I mentioned Tipperary with 13 different scores in the campaign can Anya Slattery will be player number 14 comes very very close towards a goal goal we need to be careful Sarah Healy was taking no chances on that occasion batting it out towards the corner hoping to find Aoife Dunahu but it's not as clear cut as that yet Tipperary scrapping for the breaking ball and they'll try and come inside but the referee says the ball was picked off the ground and it's going to be a free out for Galway Yes yeah, super free there from Anya Slattery all the way into Sarah Healy and just the strength of the breeze held it for a long time you know and asked a couple of questions of Sarah in the goal and opted to come with the hurl with it and, and batted it well out to the side and you know as you said not as clear cut either for, for Galway out there and good pressure from Tipperary but unfortunately um, for them Roshan Hare just penalised for picking the ball off the ground Neve Kilkenny in possession for Galway just outside her own 40 five meter line driving it down the right again they're trying to isolate the forwards looking for Sabina Rabbit on that occasion but Emer Luckman says no wins the ball sends it up the field but only as far as Carrie Dolan and Carrie Dolan under pressure kicks it along the ground Rebecca Henley throws a hurl into possession but Courtney Ryan did well and Tipperary have possession now and bring it up towards the 65 meter line they need to continue tipping on points Kilkenny or Tipperary I should say because they're not going to win this game with 10 points you would feel with Goey coming back Clodagh McIntyre trying to create a scoring opportunity the referee says there was a foul or was it afterwards or not either way the free in for Tipperary is going to give them that chance to get their 11 point yeah Clodagh McIntyre with the advantage there from, from when she took off on her run and, and John Darwin's hand went straight up straight away so knew she had the advantage but that's super work from Tip and you know that's what they're going to have to do is to carry the ball and you know once they got into possession the call went up from the sideline underneath it was to carry 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 and it's what they'll have to do into that breeze and look if they can get a couple of chances then from freeze or from play they'll have to make them count on the scoreboard Scoring in the second half so far is three points to one favour in Galway as we come up towards the three quarterback. So this will be an important point for Tipperary if Contevan, who got four scores in the first half, if she can put this over the bar, put four points between the teams. Contevan 
Goes for the shot. The umpires have a look. They nod at each other. I think they're happy with the decision that it's going to be a score for Tipperary. It's confirmed a score for Tipperary. Nearly 14 minutes gone in the second half. 11 points to 7. Yeah, and a chance now to see what Galway will do with their puck. You know, Tip opted to go along with a lot of them in the first half. But uh, Sarah Healy looks like she's looking for a shorter option on this occasion in the Galway goal. So Sarah Healy... Doesn't take the short option, goes with the long one, and Tipperary and Galway just think they got themselves disorganised there for a moment, and Tipperary were always reading that ball, but unfortunately for themselves, it goes out over the line, and Galway will get another opportunity through Roisin Black. Roisin Black, player, wearing number five, a quality defender, coming through the underage ranks in Galway, looking around for options, decides to send it down towards the middle, and see if one of our teammates can read it, but it's Courtney Ryan who leads it off for Eva McGrath. Eva McGrath, though, left in her own with two players, that doesn't bother her at all, and she goes past the 45 meter line who would she give a test sends it down in the direction of was it Kareen Blair and Kareen Blair gives the pass out for Clona McIntyre and Clona McIntyre is on the move down the right as well can she get past Emma Hellebert she goes out wide goes for a shot at the post and Clona McIntyre puts the ball over the bar we're nearly 45 minutes in a well worked score from Tipperary there's five between the lane 12 yeah. points to 7 an outrageous finish from Clona McIntyre you know and that all came from a Galway line ball just in front of us here and Tip read it really 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 well but just the composure of Aoife McGrath coming out from the back there you know had a couple of chances maybe to strike it long but took her time found the player in the best position Kareem Blair with a lovely hand pass then just in front of, of Clodagh McIntyre and that set her on her way and a super super score from her I said a few minutes ago the Goy were leading 3-1 in the second half it's 3 all now Carrie Dolan goes for a shot and that goes to the right and wide and just taking the Goy viewpoint in for a moment they just in the last couple of moments seem to have got themselves a bit disorganised yeah look they don't seem to have any real you know even Sarah Healy on the last pocket didn't really have any options and, and looked a couple of times maybe for a run or for a move and in the end opted to go long and it was Mary Ryan at full back for Tiberi that read it best and, and intercepted it but as you said just a little bit rudderless maybe at the minute from Galway Anya Slattery sending it down the middle, but Goway will still fight for the ball. Carrie Dolan doing well, sends a nice teasing one for Ailish O'Reilly. Just goes over her head. Mary Ryan with possession for Tipperary, turning inside. Let's not forget, Tipperary are playing this game with 14 players. It doesn't look like it on the field of play at the moment, but Goway still very much in the hunt. As Kareen Blair, I thought it was interesting seeing her playing down a corner forward because they normally know her as a wing back, but that's where she's officially playing, though she comes out to get involved with the action, but doesn't get past Anya Keane. Anya Keane, Sarah Durvin was willing to duck there to let Anya Keane get a ball inside it might work out for Galway this is Neve Hanavy Neve Hanavy looking around can't find a space she'll go for a shot at the post and Neve Hanavy puts the ball over the bar uh, 16 minutes into the second half back to 4 8 points to 12 yeah look and Tip will be a little bit disappointed I suppose they didn't deal better with, with the ball there they had it in possession just turned over on their own 45 and left the opportunity there and no better player than Neve Hanavy to, to punish you Focusing on two substitutes there for Galway coming on the field to play. You might have heard of them. They had exploits in Crow Park just two weeks ago. Orla and Siobhan McGrath, number 25 and number 26, have entered the field of play. And that means that Galway means serious business. Coming off for them is Ailish O'Reilly and Sabina Rabbit. They're the two changes. It just goes to show the abundance of options that Galway have in attack. Colin Murray wasting no time. He wants to get this result. No, absolutely. He definitely wants the result. You know, the fact that that the McGraths and, and the Sarsfields contingent were even named in the panel today it showed that they meant intent you know that they were going to look for a result and look Galway or Carl obviously feels now that it's in the melting pot and, and now is the time to introduce them so it's a free in for Tipperary to give him a grab one to free in the allocation. So a chance for Cot to fan a way to respond. Tipperary will want to keep two scores between these teams because it's going to be very difficult to keep out a goal. But Cot to fan is really able to put over the points and she's proven already in this match. We look at the clock. The clock says 17 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Tipperary 12 points. Galway 8. And don't forget to join us again. 145 Crow Park tomorrow where Elaine will be joined by Killian Whelan in the commentary box with Dublin against down. Uh, Dublin. Uh, returning to Crow Park for the first time in 11 years down didn't get to play in Crow Park when they won the Intermediate Ireland caught the fans free it's not going to be in target goes to the right and wide and remains a four point ball game and look at that Sarah Durvin out the field of play was looking for that ball straight away from Sarah Healy and now it's in for Orla McGrath Orla McGrath with the ball the sister Siobhan is to the right gives the pass off this is what Galway wants Siobhan McGrath's inside the shot a goal for Galway a goal for Galway exactly what the manager ordered and you could see it there Sarah Durvin wanted a quick ball, send it inside, Orla to Siobhan, goal for Galway. Yeah, look, that was a preset move anyway. It came straight from the puck out. Sarah Healy didn't even wait for that ball to go wide. She had a back in play. Sarah Durvin around the middle of the field caught it and the delivery was straight down to, to the McGrath inside. And look, they teamed up again as they've done time and time again for Sarsfields and for Galway. And the result was a, was a goal. 
12 points to Tipperary, 1-8 to Galway. The Tipperary still lead by a point, but the next score you feel is very, very important now as Galway getting into their rhythm. Aoife Donoghue down in the direction of Orla McGrath. Orla McGrath scored a goal against Tipperary in the All-Ireland semi-final last year. She wants a point on this occasion, puts the ball over the bar, and just like that, Galway are back on level terms, 1-9 to 12 points. Yeah, two McGraths, two balls, and a goal and a point, and, you know, that's, I suppose that's the, that's the, the, the type of player they are that's the calibre of player they are and they're goal getters and score getters and, and Galway now know that they just need to hit the ball in there as quick and as often as they can and, and keep that tip full back line under the cosh you get the feeling Tipperary can't afford to let Goey go in front but Goey know now they can sense it they can smell it there's an opportunity here Clodagh McIntyre has different ideas she takes the ball in the 65 metre line can Tipperary push themselves to the uh, end here as well against the All-Ireland champions Roisin Howard uh, gets surrounded by two players you can see the hunger in Aoife Dunahoo and Derva Higgins uh, uh, retrieving the ball but Tipperary showed that they're not willing to give up yet the advantages with Tipperary for a free and it might come back for the uh, challenge from Shauna Healy now she put the hands up on caught the fan there so I don't know if we're going back with that free or if we're going for the previous one but either way the referee is going to talk to Shauna Healy and Tipperary will have a chance to go back in front yeah, look, the the advantage was certainly being played for the first tackle and, and the hand was still up when that last tackle went in. Caught the van, got the shot away, but Sean Healy's block looked to be a little bit late and a little bit high, so interesting to see what John Darmody will do on this occasion. So, uh, it's a yellow card. Is I, I just couldn't see the card there. I know he held it out there, but it is a yellow card, so Sean Healy goes into the book. Three players from each uh, caution by the official in this game. Caught the van, the player that is on the ground at the moment. She will be taking this free when we restart. It is against the window lane, but it's in the central channel. You would fancy her to put it over. Yes, yeah, certainly. No, the last one was further out to the left-hand side there and probably against the breeze, shooting into, into that town goal there so this one a little bit more central it is on the 45 but look we saw Carrie Dolan I suppose make the distance in the first half so so you'd fancy caught to make the distance and just hope that the breeze can try and carry it in for her we're inside the final 10 minutes here of this Little Woods Ireland National Camogie League game in Duggan Park, Ballinasloe, live in the Camogie Association YouTube channel, brought to you in association with entry, and Cot the fan knows how important this is, his goal, we have come back to level the teams, can she put Tipperary back in front, Cot the fan with the free for Tipperary, it goes over the bar, they had to get it over the bar, 9 minutes to go, 13 points to 1-9. Yeah, had to get it over the bar, now they have to get, you know, numbers back, and I suppose this is where the 14 players is going to come into play, Gal Galway had the, the benefit of being able to drop Emma Helbert back into that pocket in the first half to defend against those long pockets and long deliveries in. Tip don't have that option as well being down to 14 players so they're trusting their full back line to go toe to toe with that full forward line. Anya Slattery with a long drive, oh, sorry, Sarah Healy I should say, with a long drive down the field, but Tipperary win the ball back and they'll work it up the field now. Good passing movement, this is Courtney Ryan, weary number six. It was looking for Grace O'Brien, but you don't put a ball in front of Sarah Durvin like that and expect to get away with it. And all of a sudden, it nearly came for Siobhan McGrath. Tipperary isolated, this is Anya Keane. Anya Keane, can she create space for going? Getting inside here now, getting away from Julianne Burke, goes for the shot. She probably should have popped out over the bar, I think she was in two minds. What to do with the danger is not averted, as Eva Dunhu was there for going as well but Tipperary deal with the danger on that occasion and send it out uh, towards the 45 meter line but Neve Kenny is going to have another go for Galway gives it to Anya Keane good control from Anya Keane but doesn't get too far Kira Maher back to help out you can see Claire Hogan where is she not been in this game back in the full back line where number 14 wins the ball gives it to Grace O'Brien Grace O'Brien she went out over the line but the ball didn't the linesman happy enough to continue to play Grace O'Brien continues to go but Neve Hanavy puts on the pressure it's Quiva Maher her wear number eight for Tipperary gives it back to Julianne Burke it goes out over the line the linesman says that it's going to be a Tipperary ball and a Tipperary sideline cut inside the 45 metre line yeah and I think you just see a little bit of tiredness creeping into some of the tip players there you know Grace O'Brien doing her best to get out along the line but just no one showing I suppose for the pass and, and forced to just carry it into tackles and eventually the shot came but too many bodies around and the block got in there for, for Galway Emer McGrath is coming on the field of play for Tipperary. She didn't have a, a cameo role in the first half for a brief period when Roisin Howard went off. I think it's Roisin Howard, the player that she actually is replacing permanently on this occasion. Tipperary had their sideline cut inside the 45 meter line, but only as far as Aoife Donoghue. And it, we're stuck now on the 45 meter line as Tipperary fight for possession through Aoife McGrath. Aoife McGrath did well, gives it to Claire Hogan. Claire Hogan has found plenty of space here, but no Tipperary player to give the ball to. And it drops down to Emma Hellebert. 
the Galway centre back but she hasn't got it away Shauna Healy comes in to help out and she holds possession gives it to Sarah Durvin Sarah Durvin out to Roisin Black Roisin Black skipping along the 65 metre line the referee says she was impeded trying to clear the ball and it's going to be a free for Galway and looks like the uh, Carrie Dolan is going to take this Elaine and no doubt she's taking this to go for a score Absolutely look she's your, your score taking free taker and we saw as I said in the first half caught Devan with one from a little bit further out a little bit closer to the sideline so certainly the distance is there with that breeze and you'd fancy Carry Dolan from this distance Carry Dolan to get the teams back in level terms just over six minutes of normal time remaining we have had a few stops expect a few more minutes on top of the six but Carrie Dolan is only ticking about getting the score can she put Galway back in level terms it's not going to travel it's not going to be accurate definitely it has travelled but it goes out to the right and wide not to be at the moment Tipperary are holding on to this one point lead yes Galway did get back on level terms but Tipperary are holding the advantage they know how important this is for the work that's been put in off the field underage over the last couple of years this is the league with Tipperary were denied their league final two years ago after beating Galway by one point in this very venue in the National Camogie League and Anya Slattery restarts the play but Galway have the ball through Aoife Dunahu Aoife Dunahu looking to send it in towards Steve Hanavy it doesn't go there but it'll come to Orla McGrath Orla McGrath trying to find the sister Siobhan but Tipperary get the bodies back in the way and the referee says a foul committed on Aoife McGrath who's another player that's given everything to the Tipperary to in this game and they'll have a chance now to weather that again and try and create their own attack absolutely for McGrath has been rock solid there at wing back today really really composed on the ball and first into the break on that occasion put her body down on the line and got that ball on the hop ahead of the of Siobhan and Orla McGrath really really important interception I suppose and, and then used all her experience to, to earn that free for herself and you know no hurry on Anya Slattery coming from the tip goal now just taking every second she can to, to run down the clock and that's what you'd expect from a team in their position at the moment. Take their time, get this right. They know if they can get another score, it still doesn't guarantee anything, but it puts the doubts in the opposing team's mind. But the ball breaks for Galway, but who'll take it? It's Sarah Durvin, the captain, wins the ball for Galway straight away down towards the attack, down in the direction of Neve Hanavy. But she loses out to Mal Ryan, and Mal Ryan leaves it for Aoife McGrath. But it's not clear as Rebecca Henley and Neve Hanavy both apply the pressure, and the third player is Carrie Dolan. And Carrie Dolan wants to get this into her hand. She told about giving the pass inside goes with a shot herself hits it to the right and wide maybe she should have looked at putting it inside you don't blame her for going for the shot but it's a wide it doesn't count as a score yeah and I think that's probably what happened Carrie on that occasion looked up saw the McGrath inside thought maybe about putting it across the square then opted at the last second to go for her own score and it just didn't carry against the breeze and you know another wide for for Galway and it just gives Tip another lifeline I think we've had a goalie substitution there. I think you know Heather Cooney was warming up a few minutes ago, and if it's Heather Cooney who's on the field to play, it's great to see her back. Picked up a serious injury in the league last year. One of the great goalie players as well. But we're just seeing the confirmation of who has gone off there, Elaine. And actually, it's, it's Carrie Dolan, is it? Yeah, it looks to be Carrie Dolan coming to the sideline. Anyway, just waiting for it to be, yeah, just to be confirmed. So, uh, a defender Heather Cooney gone in into the backs, and and Carrie Dolan coming off from the forwards. I can see Aoife Dunhu, I think it's gone into a wing forward position as well, though no doubt that won't stop her covering the fields. The referee has blown the whistle for a challenge in the back of the head of Sarah Durvin and the Tipperary balance were not happy with that occasion too, but it's going to be a free for Galway and an opportunity for Rebecca Henley because of course Carrie Dolan has gone off. Rebecca Henley now gets her opportunity to level the teams. Yeah, and I suppose that the real disgust from the tip team there was that Grace O'Brien had gone, or Claire Hogan had gone ahead on the break and she had got the body ahead so tip were in a position of attack and now they've been called back and as you said a clear scoring chance now for Rebecca Henley she should have the distance there's plenty of voices on the line for both teams as well, really getting behind their players. They know how important the next three plus minutes are. Rebecca Henley takes the free for Galway. It looks good. It goes over the bar. Galway are back in level terms. Two and a half minutes to go. It's Galway 110, Tipperary 13 points. Yeah, look, and it's really in the melting pot, as you said, now just coming down the home straight. And look, you'd be forgiven if you're just joining in for, for not believing that Tip were down to 14 players for most of this game. They've certainly asked all the questions for a long time, but look like true champions. Galway now look to be coming up with the answers but the next score is going to be crucial not for the first time I've said it in the commentary the next score is critical especially if you're a Tipperary supporter Claudia McIntyre on the move as well turns on her left hand side she's a player on right but the referee has said it was too many steps and it's unfortunate for Claudia McIntyre that has happened the goalie defence Shepard and her pushing her out wide and Emma Helbert will restart the action yeah look that's what Claudia McIntyre brings to that attack you know she's got plenty of speed and you know she has been running at that goalie defence and just on that occasion I suppose the tackle came in at the right time and just forced her um, to overcarry it a little bit 
bit but look a change in the in the Galway free taker now Sarah Healy is coming from the goal so she'll probably fancy her chances but it just gives Tip a chance to get bodies back in front of that full forward line Sarah Healy is thinking about this can she drive this all the way but Galway have not led in this match it has to be said she sends it out wide looking for Aoife Donoghue Aoife Donoghue going up against Aoife McGrath the battle of the Aoife's and it's the McGrath from Drummond Inch that wins the ball wins the free as Aoife Donoghue comes in behind and Tipperary will get a chance remember as we mentioned earlier on the draw match this is a regulation group game but we won't be any the wiser who's going to the league final if it finishes in a draw because Galway still have to play awfully next week Arena Friday is is coming on the field to play for Tipperary. They're making a the change. We'll tell you who's coming off in a moment as Anya Slarry maybe tries to sneak a couple of yards up the field to take her free. But we're, the change is taking place. The clock is ticking down. We are inside the final minutes of normal time. But Elaine, I'd imagine we could have three or four minutes at least on top of that. Yeah, when you judge, look, we played five, I think, in that first half and we've had plenty of stoppages of play and, and plenty of hold-ups in the second half as well. So you'd imagine we'll go all the way for, for three plus and maybe more. So plenty of time still for one team to, to try and eke out a winner. So play restarts there in the battle for possession. Quiva Mahers, the player that went off for Tipperary. They have the ball through Claire Hogan. Claire Hogan gives it back to Eva McGrath. The three players in the red helmets. The turn is Green Blair. The ball bounced away. She runs into Sarah Durvin, who held her ground in it Looks like she's playing in the centre back position. Orla McGrath has come back to help out the Galway defence. But this is Kira Maher. Kira Maher with the pass inside for Tipperary as Grace O'Brien is pushed up in towards the inside line. The position she's well used to playing before. And now a scrum outside the 20 metre line is Galway try and stop Tipperary going back in the lead we have played the 60 minutes here in Battle of the Slow it's all down to the discretion of the referee we'll keep an eye out to see if anybody signals how much injury time we are going to have we're expecting three or four minutes the referee looks like he's going to throw this ball in and one a lane that Galway will want to win absolutely and Tipper need to be really really alert to you know that if Galway do win it there's a chance that a quick long delivery will hit the full forward line so you know Tipperary backs need to be as alert to it as the Tipperary forwards Yep. You might have just heard it there from the stadium announcer, Christy Brown, at least five minutes to play in this game. We've only played 30 seconds. We're looking at Tipperary. Tipperary down the right. Grace O'Brien tries to keep the ball in play back towards Cotta Fan. Cotta Fan are working together, the Tipperary attackers here at the moment, but the going defenders, you can see the maroon jerseys are there, and the foul has been committed. It's going to be a free out for Galway. The scoring opportunity goes a beg in there for Tipperary, and Galway now know if they can get their noses in front, it might be good enough for them to drive on for the victory as Sarah Healy, their goalkeeper, is coming out to take this free in the corner back position and it's all, you can just feel the tension Elaine from both sets of supporters and even the management teams in front of us as well this is really setting up nicely. Yeah, you know it was tense and tenacious for most of the game and, and both sets of supporters were vocal enough but now we're into the last couple of minutes I suppose and the, the winning post is in touch for both of them so both sets of supporters and management know that now who's going to get the next score in this game as the long ball from Sarah Healy ended up with Mary Ryan the Tipperary full back and this is the battle in front you can see Neve Hannafy the number 14 for Galway in the mix there trying to get the ball there's a Tipperary on the player on the ground who looks to be in some form of control of the slitter that was Kira Maher Kira Maher has support there Ema McGrath wearing number 22 has the ball wins the free and a free out for Tipperary Anya Keane not happy with the decision of the match official Tipperary won't mind that uh, Mary Ryan is on the ground as well. The linesman has come out here to have a word or maybe just push a few players back as well. And as you mentioned, Elaine, intention, we're certainly seeing it here. Absolutely. And look, it's, it's hard to see at times with those rook balls, who's going to come out of them or who might be in control of them. But, you know, on that occasion, it was Tipperary and, and Eamon McGrath who got down on it. But again, it was, you know, Keir Damar back there. Aoife McGrath again, composed as ever. And, you know, they're going to need a lot of composure now to see out this final three or four minutes. Tipperary of a plus 51 scoring difference. I'm just doing my maths there as we check in Mary Ryan to see. As I mentioned, if it finishes in a draw, it's not going to make much difference, but it might give us an idea exactly what Goey would have to do. Of course, they have to beat Hoffley first in the game. A 51 against 33 is the scoring difference. So if it finishes in a draw, that would mean that Goey would have to beat Hoffley by 18 plus points in next week's game to get through. Of course, they have to get the result as well first and foremost. But if Tipperary can get the one point, they will be going 
going to the league final. No doubt there's plenty of interest in our commentary and maybe a few bodies here. I haven't seen any Elaine from Cork uh, keeping an eye on this match, but certainly uh, no doubt Matthew Toomey uh, is glued to the action if he's not here in person. Absolutely. Look, and you know, this is the type of game you want in a league semi-final, if that's what you want to call it, as a league semi-final. You want to get a challenge like that and you need a challenge like that before you go to play a team like Cork. You know, Cork and Kilkenny had it last week and it was a massive game for both teams. I think both sets of management and both panels last weekend would have got something from the game and certainly regardless of the result here today, Tip and Galway would both have learned a lot about themselves either going into a, a league final or heading into a, a championship later in the year. There's plenty of contenders around the country for the challenge to top four. No doubt we'll see them over the summer playing Division 1 or Division 2 League Camogie this year. But uh, these are two of the top four sides. Uh, Tipperary level and points with Galway. 13 points to 110, but it'll be out of their own hands if they finish us all square. A substitution for Tipperary is getting ready and Saoirse Ryan will be on the field of play in the next couple of moments as Anya Slattery gets ready. She's coming on the field of play for Mary Ryan who's uh, involved in this game has been paid. Now we have played 64 minutes but we've had a hold up there of around two minutes so expect at least another three minutes of action in the game is there a winner for Tipperary is there a winner for Galway that's the question the long ball down in towards the Tipperary attack looking for a player to take control Claire Hogan the player that tries to do it but it's Aoife Donoghue as she always does wins the ball for Galway gives it to Anya Keane Anya Keane to Neve Kilkenny and Neve Kilkenny will drive it down towards Orla McGrath who puts her body in the way but takes a high challenge from Julianne Burke Orla McGrath gets back on her feet the challenge is a Coming in from Tipperary players, but she gives it to Siobhan. Siobhan McGrath pushed back to the 65 meter line. You can hear the cheers from the both sets of supporters for going for Tipperary as Neve Hanavy on the 45 meter line turns on a right, goes for a shot at the post. The umpires have a look, and the ball goes to the left and wide. We thought for a moment that was the time to go. We would go in front. It remains all square. Yeah, and I think most of the cheers from the sideline here were cheers for the tip defenders to pick up Neve Kilkenny, who drifted up through the left corner here, and the tips crowd and the tip management could see. And they just urged a couple of tip defenders maybe to see it, but a, a let off there, you know, and super pressure from Tipperary in enforcing the shot on that occasion. The ball is won by Roisin back for Galway trying to find Aoife Dunahoo. Aoife Dunahoo getting herself in position there. The pass inside but it's read by Saoirse Ryan. She hasn't got it away yet and Tipperary needs to be very very careful here now and kicked along the round by Courtney Ryan anywhere but Galway are building up the players. They feel the winner is here. The pass just over hit to Anya Keane. We're back towards the 45 meter line. Galway missed the chance. The frontal challenge there and the referee says it's a free in for Galway. Well Elaine we get your thoughts on that. The two players certainly collide us. Yeah look this is one of these rules in Camogie that no one ever understands you know the player in possession of the ball the player who stands her ground what way does it go and on this occasion John Darmody made no, no debate about it straight down hand up free for Galway and look you can argue that that Sarah Durbin was standing her ground you can argue that Claire Hogan you know no one has to get out of the way of anyone so Claire Hogan was the player in possession and I think it's up to her to, to avoid the tackle. Well, the referee is having a word with a member of the Tipperary management team, so I have a funny feeling it'll be one or two players leaving the uh, inside the fence area of this, but uh, the, first and foremost, the concern is both for Sarah Durvin and for Claire Hogan, and Sarah Durvin, thankfully for Galway, is back on her feet, but Claire Hogan uh, still is not 100% um, uh, sort so of that she is on, on the field of play, and we're just having a look around to see if there's any changes going to be made here. It looks like Claire Hogan's afternoon, is she going to be finished up as well? She looks a, a bit no, she's okay, and thankfully for Tipperary side of things, it looks like that she well, no, she's not okay. Uh, she is going off the field of play. A uh, change is coming for Tipperary. We can tell you, Emer Heffernan is about to enter the field of play. There's going to be some uh, uh, casualties in this in regards injuries, Elaine, but this game finishes. Yeah, look, there's going to be a, a long list of them, and there's going to be a long list of injury time as well. You know, that, that's taken up another two or three minutes there, so I'm not sure how long more we're going to be playing here, but, you know, Tip's starting to lose some, some really key players. Claire Hogan had had a massive game for them up to this point, and, you know, I suppose it's just a toll on the body now. 67 minutes, and, and a lot of that played with 14 players. Players. We've bet seven minutes of injury time here in the Littlewoods Ireland National Camogie League. You're looking at Rebecca Henley. Can she get the score to win this game for Galway? It's looking good in our angle. What are the umpires going to say? I think they're going to say it's a point. And for the first time in the game, Galway are going into the lead. It's Galway 111, Tipperary 13 points. Is that going to be good enough a lane for the All Ireland Champions? Look, you'd imagine. But as I said, we, we've had seven, eight minutes of seven and a half minutes of extra time. We've had a couple of long stoppages in that. So you'd imagine Tip, if they can muster anything at all, may get a chance again 
Neve Kilkenny with the ball gives it back to Emma Hellebert. Emma Hellebert down towards the corner looking for Siobhan McGrath. Siobhan McGrath up against Emer Lokman. Emer Lokman does well and wins it. Now Tipperary trying to create the opportunity outside the 45 metre line but Galway hunting and packs. Four players in five. They won possession back through Neve Hanavy. Gives it to Orla McGrath. Another point for Galway might be enough. They might get more if this comes to Eva Dunno. But out comes the goalkeeper Anya Slattery. Eva McGrath in possession being challenged by Siobhan McGrath. The referee says it's a free out for Tipperary and a last chance for them to get something out of the game you would feel plays out towards the middle of the park uh, drive down towards the corner and this might fall for uh, the number 22 who is Eamon McGrath but Eamon McGrath loses out Sarah Derwin she's been very busy in the second half the referee has blown the final whistle it's all over Galway have beaten Tipperary by a point uh, they've got there with Rebecca Henley's free in the end the goal with Siobhan McGrath Elaine your overall thoughts in the game Look, what a finish, I suppose. It, it, it started with a bit of a bit of Hector with, uh, with Tip going down to, to 14 players and, you know, it finished really. Look, we've played 68 minutes there on the clock, I think. Look, it's, um, it's a tough one for Tip to take. You know, they were in a, a winning position for so long and played so much of that match with 14 players and you felt it was always going to have its toll. And when the match went on, then it rolled on to that extra added time. You could see the bodies physically getting tighter and, you know, Galway were able to introduce, I suppose, a couple of subs. The two McGraths hit 1-1 one, one within a couple of seconds of coming on and all Ultimately, that was the difference. I have to say with Tipperary as well, they pushed themselves all the way with just 14 players on the field to play. They gave everything they could, but they'd be so disheartened that they came out of this game with nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a sickener that it was a, a questionable enough for you, I suppose, in front of us here that, that ultimately decided that, you know, they fought absolutely to the bitter end and, you know, created some really, really good scoring opportunities and, and created some really good passages of play throughout there. But I suppose it was just that couple of seconds of class from the two McGraths and, and the 1 1. The goal was always going to be a massive score in this game. And look, it was Galway that got it and got it at the right time. As you said in commentary, got their noses in front and you know it took all the 67 minutes before they got there but got there just at the right time. Goey have proven they're All-Ireland champions they're up for the battle of trying to retain their title of course they're not league champions but they're favourites now to go through and play Cork in the league final they still have to get the job done against Offaly but it just shows the options they had and like the McGraths what an influence they had when they came off the bench Yeah look and they could they could reshuffle the deck at the back Sarah Dervin we saw her out around the middle of the field you know half back line coming near the end there and she had a big input in the goal you know got that quick puck out so just a little bit of experience I suppose from Tipperary in, in seeing out those games and a couple of match winning forwards up front but look from a tip point of view massively massively impressed with their effort for as we said like we can't overemphasize enough 14 players for so much of that game up against the the all-ireland champions and you know they brought absolutely everything to it and went right down to the wire with them and i suppose just a little bit of tiredness a little bit of, of lack of energy coming near the end they're having fought for so long with just the 14 players and ultimately you know a questionable free that caught them in the end both teams going through huddles at the end there before we finish up in regards to the direct commentary lane overall the players that impressed you and your player of the match yeah, look, I suppose from, from a tip point of view, I thought that their defence were, were outstanding against a Mary Ryan Marshall did so, so well at full back there. Aoife McGrath, I thought, was so composed throughout and, you know, had a real impact on the game. And up front then, Clodagh McIntyre, you know, carried the game to them, caught Devan as dependable as ever. Claire Hogan had a massive a massive game as well until she came off there. And I suppose from a sub perspective, Kier Damar being introduced and she had a huge game. Look, for Galway, it was the, the standout names, the standout players against Sarah Dervin, you know, Claire Hogan was asked a couple of questions of her early in the game and Sarah, Sarah Dervin got to, to, got to grips with that, moved out to the half-back line. Their half-back line, Dervin Higgins, you know, had a massive year last year and, and carried that in today and around the middle of the field, look, Aoife Dunhu and, and Aoife Kilkenny pop up time and time again and up front a variety of scores and as you said, their new players, the likes of Anya Keane, Sabine Rabbit, until she was um, substituted, were really, really influential. But I suppose for me, Aoife Dunhu probably covered the most ground out there today and probably had the, the most impact on the game. So, you know, in a game that had heroes all over, Aoife Dunhu who probably stood out as the standout player there today. So Eva Donahue is the player of the match here. We hope you enjoyed our coverage in the Camogie Association YouTube channel in association with Entry. Don't go away anywhere. We'll have some post-match reaction in a couple of minutes' time. But Galway have one foot in the league final. They have to get the job done against Offaly next week. They've beaten Tipperary by a point. And the final score here from Duggan Park, Ballinasloe. They finished Galway 111, Tipperary 13 points.
delighted to be joined by Galway's player, the match chief, Adonahu, and Aoife, I was just talking to you on the way up, and that was a battle. Yeah, God, we're, we're lucky to come out on the right side of that. Um, but look, uh, I suppose this time of the year, it's, you know, often, I suppose, a couple of years ago, maybe we mightn't have got through. And uh, Tip pushed us all the way there, and look, we're just happy to be on the right side of it. It was a workout both teams needed, you could argue. No disrespect to the teams that you played already, too. And from the word go, you were throwing yourselves into challenges left, right, and centre, and it showed the desire of both teams that you really wanted to get this victory. Yeah, look, it was a usually physical game, and you know, both teams went at it. I'm sure, you know, both teams wanted to go out and win the game, and like we knew coming here today that. You know, we had to be at our best to even compete with Tip. You know, they're a serious team and they pushed us all the way the semi-final last year. And look, we knew coming down it was going to be a really, really tough game. And um, look, we're looking forward now to a, a league final in a couple of weeks' time. And you want to be playing as many matches as you can at this stage of the year. So look, we're just happy to put our ourselves in that position. You were against the wind in the first half. And even we can see here at the moment, it's quite yeah. gusty wind it was. How difficult was it to play in the first half? Because you went in five points down. Yeah. But do you know what? It was probably a fair reflection of the elements. Yeah, look, it was really, really tough there in the first half. The, the, I don't know whether it looked what it looked like on, from the outside in, but the breeze was a huge factor. And um, look, we were just trying to, I suppose, keep ourselves in the game up until half time. We knew it was going to be a really tough first half. And then um, we were hoping, you know, maybe it might have been a little bit easier in the second half. But like the, the win there was really hard for both teams, you know, um, to play against it. And even shooting down this side, the goals, like uh, Carrie took a couple of frees and the wind, you know, brought them off the other side of the post. So, Look, it was incredibly hard to, to, to play against and we were just happy to be, you know, within touching distance, I suppose, coming out into the second half. Yeah, those, some of those balls were like frisbees yeah. the way they were in the air as well. Yeah. The big moment, of course, uh, two sisters, you know, very well coming yeah. off the bench, banging 1-1 one, one before we knew it. Yeah. And that was really the turning point. Yeah, look, uh, fair play to Siobhan and Orla. You know, they had a serious win with Sarasfields a couple of weeks ago and um, Orla was actually in Manchester there and I think Cahal only texted the two girls on Tuesday and Orla got an early flight home to be here. So, look, um, it just shows competition that's in the group and, you know, everyone's pushing for places and, like, we knew once we got the ball into them that they'd, they'd do the business and, you know, they were on the field, I'd say, five minutes and they'd won one um, score between them and, look... Um, Look, it's just pushing everyone on and standards are huge now and there's huge competition for place so they've certainly put their hands up and you know they're they're only just back into the setup so look it's not easy i suppose come back in well it's probably easier to come back in when, when you win i suppose but like they they've been on the go a long time now so they you know they haven't had that terribly long of a break so look credit to the two girls for 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 coming in today you know even just two questions before I let you go of course I won't go through everybody of course Sarah Durvin back at the starting team and she certainly threw herself into challenges as well in <laughs> yeah, the game absolutely. and also Anya Keane what an impact yeah. she's having in this team oh huge sure. look she's only a young player um, she's been working away herself I'd say since Thomas's were knocked out of uh, the club last year and look it's it's showing now and she's up there and she's put her hand up and the amount of balls like for a young girl that she caught on the puck outs there like it's credit to her and as I said look competition for her places is huge now and you have the likes of Anya Keane and like Sabrina Rabbit started there today and um, look there's huge talent in Galway and um, look they're, they're, they're well able to hold their own now so look it's their job to, I suppose to push the rest of us on and try and hold on to a jersey for the for the league final and the rest of the championship and of course before that league final as well a big task against Offaly next week to get the fourth victory to yeah. get that job done and then look forward to Cork yes um, we've Offaly now I think next next Sunday so um, hopefully that'll go well and then we can look forward I suppose to, to a league final but um, look, it'll be another game, I suppose, and um, everyone's going to be, you know, fighting for places now to make their their places on the team, I suppose, um, for next weekend. So, yeah. Olivia, you're the player of the match. Well done. Big victory for Galway. Congratulations. Thanks, Darren. Thanks. So that was our player of the match there, uh, Aoife Dunn, who we've just been joined now by the Tipperary manager, Bill Mulaney. And uh, Bill, there, you just come to talk to us. Uh, obviously, Aoife is very, very happy with the result going her team's way, but I have a funny feeling you won't be happy with some of the things that happened out there. I'm not happy at all. No, why would I be? Like, you know what I mean? Some of the refereeing decisions there were scandalous. Scandalous. Like, you know, down to 14, two people pulling on the ball, and one of ours gets sent off. I mean, there's, like, fairness is fairness. It's, to be fair, you know, I mean, we hurled as well as we could with 14, pe 14 players for what, 50 minutes of the game, and we put it up to Galway. Some of the refereeing decisions there were scandalous, and I know it's hard, and I understand that, and I'm not often giving out about refs, even though you can hear me shouting and horn. But some of the decisions there were incredulous, incredulous, like, you know what I mean? Two people going for the ball, and, and a free goes against us at the 65th minute. 
Are you joking me? Like you were watching it, Joe? I mean, what did you see? It was a big decision as well, too, and ultimately proved to be the difference yeah, between the two teams. Is going we got the free. Here, the mare was going through a minute, a minute before that, and she was getting cut in two and not and um, and caught the van on this side. Now I know Galway people could say the same thing, but they were like, if you're going to call a free, call them all the time, or don't call them at all, and don't be deciding the match in the 65th minute by giving away a soft free like that. I mean, Jesus, lads, are you joking? As you mentioned, of course, dude, they've won the first half as well. The red card for Casey Hennessy too. Call us all off guard. The challenge that took place there. Your team really needed to work their socks off. You, would, They would have anyway. But with 14 players, it was always going to be a massive task. Well, of course, it was a massive task even with 15. But, like, they're the all Ireland champions are all Ireland champions for nothing. But, I mean, like, the decision was very poor uh, 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 at the wrong time with two players were doing the same thing to each other. What about the first pull there? Where was that called? What card was given out there? None, there was no card, ours got a straight red. So was he watching the game or not, or did he go to his linesman or not? Now, we, I'm proud of our players here. I'm nearly in tears there again, and they're in tears there. They couldn't work any harder or do any more. But when you're playing against 16 or 17, that's not fair either. Like, this is not fair. And I'm not one, I, I, I might be, I might, you might hear me shouting and roaring, I'm not one who you've given out, as I say, refs is that you need them all, they're part of the process and they're part of the team, they're part of the, part of the association, and they have a very hard job. But like, you know what I mean, be consistent all the time. That's what consistency is about. You know what I mean? Like, I have to, I have to make it up now. How do we uh, explain that to players after giving it their all, and next thing you're going, the referee in the 65th minute gives a free like that, and we were coming out with the ball. Says, oh, he ju she jumped into her. Two players met each other in the middle of the field. What sport are we playing? Are you joking me? Like, Jesus, lads, come on. Bill, what did you say to your players? You bought the whole panel for a hundred at the end. I'm proud of them. And I am proud of them. Like, I mean, they couldn't give any more. They hurled Galway here, and if it was 15 and 15, we'd have no complaints. But it wasn't. And the, the referee went against us for nearly every ball. I mean, you were commentating on above, you were probably scratching your head as well. I'm proud of my players, and I've always been proud of my players. I'm proud to be their manager, and Dennis and, and, and uh, Dinny and Carmel and Mary and Bobby and everybody else were proud to be associated with this group of players. We, look, you know, you know, they're brilliant. They train as hard as everybody else. All we wanted to be was treated fairly. Coming on now, obviously the result has gone against you as well. You have to pick yourselves up again. It'll be a challenge too, but a Munster Championship coming up as well. Like, as you mentioned, some of those decisions that went against Tipperary today, certainly you'll, you'll be looking at them in regards to hoping they don't go against you again later in the year. Well, like, that's it. We hope they don't. But, I mean, like, you know, look, we have to learn too. And, and again, it is, it is hard. It's hard to stomach uh, uh, 10 minutes after the game and, and when you're being interviewed because you're still kind of, you know, you're still emotional about it. But we took gather ourselves and we will and we'll go on and we'll try and beat Limerick, who are be a tough outfit as well like you know and try and progress again through the season and get into the championship and be ready for that because that's what we have you know and we're a good squad like that and they'll look they'll put this behind it they'll put it in the bank and they'll use it again going forward Bill thanks a million for joining thanks. us here look at the result now it's the Tipperary Camogie manager Bill Mullaney and Elaine Aylward has just come back to talk to us here before we finish up and we just talk about Bill there firstly and understandably he's very very angry of course the team loses by a point big decisions yes they were but they played their part in a very compelling contest Yeah look and when a game is decided on a decision like that I suppose you go back and you analyse all the decisions that happened during the game and you wonder what way they could have flipped or tossed so look when when that's a, the defining moment I suppose in a game it's obviously the one that, that you think about most but look looking back on the game I think he's right he can be very very proud of you know what they use maybe 17, 18 players there say but played most of that match with 14 players and, and you'd never have thought of the work rate that they brought and against that breeze in the second half having to carry every ball against uh, you know a really well set up and a really physical Galway side and, and they did that like and they put themselves right in contention as you said played a massive part and it's just a pity that they did you know as Tip have done so often in the past couple of years is they did everything bar win the game today and I suppose that's the most most discouraging thing for them is that they just couldn't get a result and, and you know it's the big result that we're, we're constantly talking about they need to beat one of the big teams and you know to get so close again today like they did to Kilkenny in, in the league semi-finals last year as well and just didn't quite get over the line so I suppose that's the really disappointing thing from a tip point of view. Like we can look at the performance of the 14 players after Casey Hennessy's red card and talk about the positives uh, obviously he'll take that going forward as well but there's only so many times with Tipperary you can be knocked down as well and well they'll feel aggrieved today as well and ultimately as you just said there they came up one point short in this match. Yeah look and I think you, you have to learn eventually from these kind of things when they keep happening you know you have to learn maybe how to get over the line and, and that's something they're maybe going to have to focus on and, and try and work on going into championship now is that when they do meet one of these big teams that they can finally just get a result in it and I suppose you just worry that it's starting to become a little bit of a habit that they get so close but just can't finish out the game and as you said look obviously when it went to we'd five minutes extra time in the first half there's seven maybe in the second half so an extra 12 minutes on, on 14 bodies is always going to take its toll and you know looking back on it maybe they'll be a bit disappointed that maybe they didn't push on a little bit more in that 
first half I thought kind of lost their way a little bit for a few minutes when they went down to 14 players and while they had had Galway on the racks in the full back line there lost their way for a few minutes and maybe gave Galway a chance just to settle into it and, and maybe didn't get up quite the scores that they would have wanted in that first half with that break behind them. One thing we are noticing from this Galway team is they're getting into the habit of turning games around. The All-Ireland final against Cork today as well. Five points down, yes they had the win, but even after getting the goal from Siobhan McGrath, Tipperary still got back in front as well. And a few years ago, we wouldn't be saying the whole Galway team clean, uh, taking this match out. Yeah, look, and, and that would have been a fault, I suppose, of Galway teams in the past and something that would have been spoken as well is that they couldn't, you know, they weren't able to dig out results, I suppose. When games weren't going their way, they weren't able to turn it. But as you said, they stayed there today, they stayed there right to the bitter end and, you know, got the goal in the point. Again, tip came again and, and, and again, Galway answered with a response. So, you know, that's heartening, I suppose, from Carl Murray and from, from a Galway point of view is that as they did in the All-Ireland final last year, when they were hit with big scores, they were able to respond and, you know, they have the players now, the, the proven match winners, the ones that know how to win all Ireland's are there to respond for them and they certainly did that today. I mentioned them when talking to Aoife Dunhill, Orland, Siobhan McGrath, two weeks after winning all Ireland's, we knew as soon as they came on they were going to do something by God they did something. Yeah absolutely look we knew as soon as we saw them named in the match day panel today that, that Galway were going for a win here today and as the minutes eked on you know you felt that they probably needed a goal maybe or certainly a couple of scoring chances up front and look they probably got on 1-1 one, one in, in two balls, 1-1 one, one in a matter of seconds and credit to the tip back line they got on top of them then and maybe didn't find the score as easy after that but that's all it took was that couple of seconds that 1-1 and look a really clever ball I suppose initially from the puck out from Galway got it to Sarah Dervin around the middle of the field and the long ball in and just caught it maybe a little bit unawares and not ready for the pace and the speed of Siobhan McGrath inside there before she goaled Two questions before we wrap up. Tipperary, of course, it's easy to say they'll shake this off, they'll focus on the task at hand. Limerick in the Munster Championship and all that, but as we've said numerous times, even in the commentary today, it's still another beat too, and those players in there are going to be absolutely gutted. Yeah, absolutely, I think so. Look, they, they deserve, and for the hurling they've played today, the hurling they've played over the past couple of years, I really feel they deserve to be to be in an All-Ireland final or a league final, to be in a national stage, and, and to get to, to Croke Park, and I feel if they could just get one win, that it would really kick-start them. You know, as I said, I think they play some lovely hurling. They're, they're a great team to watch and, you know, they're starting to build a panel now as well. They've got a couple of players to come back into this team and, you know, a couple able to come off the bench there today and, you know, have an impact on the game. Kira DeMar coming in at wing back, you know, lost nothing when she came in and had a big impact on the game going forward. So they're building a panel, but as I said before, they just, they need to get that one win. They need to, to get that monkey off their back. Beat, some, beat one of the big three teams and, and then they can look at kicking on and, and giving but you know I know it's no consolation at the moment for them but a huge huge game from them today down to 14 players as we said a massive massive work rate and, and Bill and his backroom team can be rightly proud of them well, certainly as well. Of course, that's Tipperary. No doubt they'll be in the hunt for Galway. Now, look, there's still a, anybody watching from Offaly are going to be reminding us that there's still a match to be played next week. But it looks like now Galway against Cork, the rematch in Croke Park. We've seen both teams in action. And if they both bring their A game that day, it's going to be a cracking contest. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think they're both just getting into their stride now. You know, the league was maybe a little bit slow to start for them both and, and no real challenges, I suppose, up until last weekend for Cork and this weekend for Galway. But, you know, they'll certainly get motoring now. The evenings are starting to get longer. The championship draw is coming quick and championship will come quick and thick after that. So they both know, like, if they're there in Croke Park in a league final, that that's going to be their last game before they get through to the championship. You know, their last competitive, probably, bar maybe a provincial championship for, for Cork. So a huge, huge game for both of them. And, you know, if they both get back to Croke Park, they'll be anxious to get a result there. We're certainly looking forward to that game as well, as well as Galway and Offaly next week. That was Elaine Edward. Thanks for joining me here in the commentary box. And Elaine, of course, will be in Crow Park tomorrow with Killian Whelan for our second live game this weekend. And that's the Little Woods Ireland National Camogie League match between Dublin and Down. 145. Join us here in the Camogie Association YouTube channel in association with entry. But here in Duggan Park in Ballinasloe, Mother Nature has put our power, but we're not going to run any more risks. The clouds are starting to come in. We're going to get off the field of play. We talked about the league being a slow burner getting going, but over the last two weekends, it's certainly picked up. Corker in the league final. Goalie look like they're there. They've managed to scrap out and get the results here. Siobhan McGrath's goal crucial, but Rebecca Henley's winning free gives them a one point victory over Tipperary. And Goalie and fans look like as group winners. Tipperary will pick themselves up for the championship again. Hope you enjoyed our coverage today. It finished a victory for Goalie by one point. And the final score here in Duggan Park, Panelist Low. Goalie 111. Tipperary 13 points.
Let's go. Fuck.